Egg by All-American quarterback Chuck Long in the waning seconds, defeated an upstart Michigan State team in a seesaw affair at Iowa City. Then Iowa found themselves trailing Michigan by a point with two seconds remaining. But cool Rob Hotlin finished off the Wolverines, shaking up the Hawkeye crowd and the top ten standings. Iowa's only conference loss came at Ohio State, but coupled with last week's Buckeye loss to Wisconsin and the Hawks' skyrocketing victory at Purdue, the championship is just a single victory away. But Iowa head coach Hayden Fry knows what happened last week to Earl Bruce could happen to him. For it was just a year ago that Iowa fumbled its season away, losing the ball three times against Minnesota, with the Gophers recovering each one of them. And then Minnesota's Gary Couch finished off the Hawkeyes and any championship hopes that Iowa may have had. The Golden Gophers walked away with Floyd of Rosedale, the championship hog, the symbol of this heated Hawkeye Gopher grid battle. Iowa's just a step away from the title and a trip to the Valley of the Roses. Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday. Today's Big Ten matchup features the Gophers of Minnesota against the fourth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes. Today's game brought to you by Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that distinctively clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By BMW, the ultimate driving machine. For a test drive, phone your nearest dealer. And by Republic Airlines, the only airline that gives you perks. You've earned them. This one is for all the marbles, the Big Ten Championship, the Rose Bowl, and of course, Floyd of Rosedale. It's a big game for Minnesota and for Iowa. Iowa really has some of the big guns and should win this football game, but Minnesota usually plays them very tough. And Minnesota, with a record of 6-4, and four, still very much alive for a bowl appearance as well. Representatives of the Independence Bowl here today to watch Ricky Foggy, the fine quarterback who we've seen several times this oh, season. Oh, Ricky has had a great season, and here's a big play to his big tight end, Starks. A great running attack on this Minnesota club. In fact, they've outrushed Iowa this year. Their top rusher is senior Valdez Baylor. And again, he's had a good year uh, running that wishbone uh, offense, and he's gained a lot of yards on the ground. The strength defensively is the linebacking core, led by by Peter Najarian, who's sure to be making some All-American teams this year. Sure is, and he's a hard hitter. Look at this good gang tackling here against Michigan last week. And other names defensively you'll hear us call throughout the afternoon include Bruce Holmes, who's playing a little bit banged up today, and Larry Joyner. And of course, the team they're trying to stop, one of the top clubs in the country, led by Heisman candidate Chuck Long at quarterback. Oh, he's a good one. The statistics just show it. This year, 65 point point six uh, and it's unbelievable he can really throw the ball he's a great one there are several Iowa school records that could fall this afternoon as Chuck Long plays his final regular season game for the Hawkeyes his top receiver on the receiving core is Bill Happel a guy who does not possess great speed but has tremendous hands and he reads defense as well here against Michigan he gets wide open in the center of the zone and keeps the drive going but Iowa has not gotten to be a 9-1 and one team simply by throwing the ball. They have a great running attack, too, and they're led by Ronnie Harmon, who's already been named a one All-American team this year, and will be sure to be on some more. And rightly so. He can run the ball. He's over 1,000 yards, and he's their top pass receiver. He just possesses great athletic ability. Harmon, who was hurt last year, may have cost Iowa a trip to the Rose Bowl a year ago, runs for over 1,000 yards, catches passes for over 500 yards, truly a double threat. When he needs a breather, the man they go to on the bench is very familiar to Ronnie Harmon, his brother Kevin. <laughs> what, a, what a duo they are. Pat Peterson, the nose guard, leads a strong Iowa defensive club, and also Larry Station, who will be an All-American linebacker on many All-American lists when the season is over. We'll be calling his name a lot throughout the afternoon. Iowa's going for the Roses this afternoon. If they win it, they go to the Rose Bowl. We'll be back to meet the teams right after this. Out crowd here today at Kinnick Stadium, and uh, even though the weather run a little bit on the chilly side, 25 degrees, we've had uh, a dusting of snow this morning. More flurries forecast for this afternoon. Doesn't seem to bother these fans one bit. Well, I'll guarantee you one thing: if this football team is as up as high as, as the fans are in the stands, I'm going to guarantee it's going to be a great one. There's one change in the in the Hawkeye. Uh, offensive team. Mark Spangler, number 53, the center, will be starting today, and it will be his first start. This could mean a big difference between the handoff from the center uh, to Chuck Long, so we got to keep a real close eye on that. 
The Golden Gophers, as we mentioned, very much alive for a bid to the Independence Bowl. If they can turn in a good performance today, they don't necessarily have to win this game, but just to keep it respectable. And, of course, Iowa going for the Rose Bowl. If they win it here, they'll be in Pasadena to take on either UCLA or Arizona State on New Year's Day. We must mention, not, not only do they, can they win the game, they can also tie the game and go to the Rose Bowl. So it's a big day for Iowa fans everywhere on a chilly, blustery afternoon here at Kinnick Stadium. There are roses all over the place. They sold 50,000 roses here in uh, <laughs> Iowa City yesterday. So, so roses do grow in the snow. They sure do. I don't know how long they'll last in the snow. We'll find that out. We'll be right back with the kickoff. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Back here at Kinnick Stadium, the Iowa Hawkeyes have won the toss. They've elected to receive. And it'll be Minnesota kicking off. Chip Low Miller handles the kicking chores for the Golden Gophers. The deep backs for Iowa are Quinn Early, number one, and Kevin Harmon, number 28. Big rivalry between Minnesota and Iowa. Floyd of Rosedale. <laughs> Since 1935, these 50 two teams years. This is the 50th year that they're playing for this trophy. Battle for that prized hog. Well, they did that in 1935, and that prized hog went to Minnesota. Then they bronzed it, not the real hog, of course. They have a smaller hog that they bronzed, and they've been playing for it ever since. And we are set to get underway from Iowa City. Chip Lowmiller ready to kick it off. Win early, and Kevin Harmon back deep for Iowa. The field condition quite good, by the way, despite the snow. They've swept all the snow off the field, and it didn't snow that much, so the footing is not going to be that slick. And here we go. It heads toward Harmon. He'll grab it at the five-yard line. With some running room. Harmon out across the 30, out across the 40, all the way out to the 47-yard line. Sam Richter finally brought down Kevin Harmon after a 40-yard kickoff return. And a good one. Harmon starts it out, gets Iowa off on a good foot, and that's what Hayden Fry said. He'd like to get this thing started quick, and if they get ahead of Minnesota, generally speaking, it's very difficult for a team who runs that wishbone offense to catch up. And they really have great field position here on the 45-yard line. Chuck Long, the quarterback. The fullback is David Hudson. Ronnie Harmon, the tailback. And this is Ronnie Harmon. Ronnie Hunt running room there. He picked up maybe a yard before he was stopped by Joel Brown, number nine. A lot of freshmen get playing time for Minnesota, including Joel Brown. Gain of one. It'll be second down and nine. Chuck Long, David Hudson, Ronnie Harmon in that backfield. Scott Helperson and Bill Happel, the receivers. And there's a look at the offensive line of the Hawkeyes. They're a good line as well. Second down, nine of the 46. Long back to throw for the first time, and the pass is caught by Early. He's out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Minnesota. Matt Martinez back in the coverage. Early down the field, about 10 yards, came back to the ball. And that great accuracy of Chuck Long hits him for close to the first down. Here's the offensive or defensive line for Minnesota. Joe Christofferson in there for the injured Mark Dosbabic, who misses his second straight game. Well, he made a few statements in the paper up in Minneapolis, too, that angered Iowa. And it's now a third down and two at the Minnesota 47. Early comes out wide left. to Harmon Long going downtown toward early incomplete out at the five yard line Matt Martinez along with Donovan Small back in the coverage for Minnesota he's not afraid to throw it there were a couple of men open short but very good coverage downfield on Quinn Early could not get to the ball it'll be a fourth down and two yards to go Iowa in a punting situation that's exactly what Minnesota wanted to do one two three kick the Iowa kicker is Gary Castrobala left-footed boot is going to bounce out of bounds inside the 15-yard line so 
though, the Golden Gophers will put the ball in play for the first time. Keep in mind, Iowa, a very heavy favorite here this afternoon, but they were very heavily favored last year up in Minnesota, and the Golden Gophers won the game. And you know, over the last 25 years, Iowa's only won six of the last 25 games, and uh, and Minnesota certainly plays them tough, as we said uh, in, 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 in our game. Here's the Minnesota offense. Led, of course, by quarterback Ricky Foggy, who operates out of the wishbone most of the time, sometimes out of an eye formation. There's a look at the rest of the offensive line of the Golden Gophers. Lining up in the wishbone. First down at the 14-yard line after a 33-yard Iowa punt. Valdez Taylor can find no running room. Dropped for a loss of two yards. Hap Peterson, Jay Norvell in on the tackle. Boy, these fans are ready, aren't they? Oh, not only are the fans ready, obviously, Iowa's ready, too. They came across that line of scrimmage, and that's one thing you have to go. There's that Iowa defensive line. They just made a great play against that wishbone offense. Two great linebackers here, George Davis and Larry Station. And there's a look at the defensive secondary. Jay Norvell and Devon Mitchell could be setting some school records here this afternoon as well. If they intercept the pass. Second down. Station right there to pull down the ball carrier. Andy Hare is playing in place of the injured Gary Couch. Couch out with a bad shoulder this week. Now they're, they're missing a, a great player in uh, in Couch, but Andy Hare has filled in uh, commendably over the last two or three weeks. Actually, the last couple of weeks, Hare and Couch have been pretty much sharing that spot. Sure have. Gaylord goes out wide left to line up in the I formation this time. David Puck and Valdez Baylor line up behind Ricky Foggy. It's third down 10. Foggy finds no running room whatsoever. Gain maybe a half yard. That's all. Jim Breeze making the stop for the Hawkeyes. And tempers flare on the field. They don't like each other, do they? <laughs> A lot of emotion on both sides of this game. Iowa, of course, with that Rose Bowl hope. Minnesota wanting to play well to earn a trip to perhaps the Independence Bowl. Well, the Rose Bowl just goes along with the Big Ten Championship, and I think that's what Hayden Fry wants more than anything else, is an outright championship of the Big Ten. Adam Kelly does the kicking for Minnesota. Bill Happel awaiting the kick at about his own 45-yard line. In the opening minutes of play here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. No score. Neither team's been able to do anything on their first possession. That's the boot by Kelly, an end over end kick that'll bounce and roll dead, be down at about the 46 yard line. And that's where the Hawkeyes will put it in play on their second possession after a 37 yard punt by Adam Kelly. No score with 12 minutes remaining in the first quarter. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Head coach Lou Holtz of the Golden Gophers hoping to lead his team to a postseason game, perhaps the Independence Bowl, possibly against the winner of the Clemson-South Carolina game being played today. And Hayden Fry, of course, bowl bound. He'll be in a New Year's Day bowl game, win or lose, but the one they want is the big one, the Rose Bowl. You betcha. First down, 47-yard line of Iowa. Got long, back to throw on first down. At the 43-yard line, Scott Helverson, the receiver. Dwayne Dutrell made the stop for Minnesota. Just as pretty as a picture, Helverson down the field about 10 yards. An out pattern, Chuck Long hits him. 13-yard game and a first down for Iowa. If you keep on giving Iowa this kind of field position, they're going to eat your lunch. A very experienced Iowa team on offense and defense of the 22 men who start 17 are seniors. What's Hayden going to do next year? But this is this year. More importantly, as he says, we want to win the championship this year. First down, ball just inside the Minnesota 43. Long back to throw again. Went early to receiver out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Again, Dwayne Dutrell was back on the coverage for Minnesota. So it'll be a second down and about four yards to go for the first down. He's got some of he's got such a <laughs> I think Minnesota brought it brought their mascot with him. <laughs> that is that is not Floyd of Rosedale. <laughs> no, it isn't. As a matter of fact, he just made an eight-yard gain. He came out, little friendly dog. Says howdy, folks. 
And he doesn't know which way to turn now because the noise has got him baffled. <laughs> he always wanted to be a star. <laughs> He's heading for the end zone, folks. How about those dogs? We thought they were down in Georgia. <laughs> Touchdown, <laughs> Labrador. Get those hands up. I think the Hawks want to get down there, too. Well, the fans enjoyed that. Where in the world did he come from? It's a second down and four at the Minnesota 37. Hudson can't find much running room. Stop for no gain. Peter Nigeria, number 32, whose name you'll be hearing a lot this afternoon, making the stop. Just a good tackle by Peter Nigeria. Not letting David Hudson get up the middle. It'll be a third down, about four yards to go. I, I probably, I feel that if they get close enough to the first down, they'll go for it on fourth down. Third and a long three at the 36-yard line. Hudson, by the way, is one of the players who will be back next year for Iowa. He's only a sophomore. This is Harmon. He's got the first down and then set. Inside the 20-yard line before he was finally dragged down by Matt Martinez. Good blocking on the left side by Big Mike Flagg, the tight end. Sort of caved in the left side. And you know, when Ronnie Harmon finds a little hole out there, look at the whole left side is caved down. And Ronnie Harmon found a hole out there when he accelerated. He just got down the field for a 19-yard gain. So it's a first down now at the 17-yard line of Minnesota. Hawkeyes trying to get on the board first. Run, run, run. Long, rolling right. Firing out. It's caught by Helverson. Dwayne Dutrell back in the coverage. Oh, that's just great smarts by Chuck Long. Rolling out to the right. Saw Helverson on an out pattern over on the right-hand side. He said, if, if Helverson can't catch it, it's not going to be intercepted. He threw it to the outside, and it's a nine-yard gain. It's going to be a second down and one yard to go on, a, on the eight-yard line. So the Hawkeyes knocking on Minnesota's door early. The pitch is to Harmon. Down to the five-yard line. It's a first down for Iowa. He does that as well as anybody. He skips and jumps and goes sideways up and down. He's like a jitterbug, and he gets the first down on the five. Joel Brown making the stop for Minnesota. First and goal from the five-yard line. Larry Joyner on the stop along with Steve Thompson. Now they bring in a second tight end for Iowa. That's for added blocking. They also, they also use the strong eye formation. Harmon for the touchdown. five yards into the end zone. Good blocking up front by that offensive line. And there are two big tight ends. Harmon finding a hole, getting into the end zone very quickly. It's Iowa six, Minnesota nothing. Now the extra point attempt by Rob Houtman. And the kick is good. And with nine minutes, 48 seconds remaining in quarter number one, the Hawkeyes of Iowa have taken that first step toward the Rose Bowl. They lead Minnesota, 7-0. Here's Ronnie Harmon. He finds the hole. Good blocking up front. Look at that big hole. You could drive a Mack truck through through that thing. And I'll tell you what, Ronnie Harmon got in for that six points. Iowa kicked the extra point. Now leads 7-0 early here in the first period. Ready now for the Iowa kickoff. Marv Cook will kick it off for Iowa. Eugene Gaylord waiting at his own end zone for Minnesota. 
Iowa came to play today. They look awfully strong, and they're coming off the ball offensively and defensively, making an awful lot of penetration into that Minnesota line. That's where it's won in those trenches. You know that, Peter? Didn't take him long, did it? Two minutes no, and 12 sir. seconds, only seven plays to move the ball 53 yards for the first touchdown of the afternoon. The amazing Chuck Long, and really a candidate for that Heisman Trophy. Now the Iowa kickoff. Gaylord waiting for it at a six-yard line. They call him Rocky Gaylord, and a good return by him out to the 30-yard line before he was brought down. Craig Clark making the stop for Iowa. I don't see any flags on the field, so it will be a good run back. We do have someone hurt on the field for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and the referees have called a timeout. Well, the injury stops the clock. We'll try to pick up who that player is. We can't quite see the number right now. There it is. Number nine, Ken Sims, a senior from East St. Louis, Illinois. Now, Kenny, on that kamikaze squad, we always call them the kamikaze squad when you had to play on everything because some of these guys run up and down the field like uh, like the Japanese pilots, you know, into the into the ships, and they don't care about anything. And every once in a while, they do get popped pretty hard. Sims, by the way, besides being on the special teams, is the starting left cornerback defensively for Iowa, so he's an important man to that defensive unit. Has two interceptions this year, along with playing very strongly. Uh, uh, in, in that defense. It does not look like he'll be able to stay in the game. His backup is a freshman from Duncanville, Texas named Keaton Smiley. Sims looks like he's going to be all right. He's going to be helped off the field. Well, maybe it's a little worse than I thought. Obviously, it looks like a knee injury. Could be a knee or an ankle, but yeah. Sims Looks well, like he may be through for the afternoon. Well, the trainer wants him to stay off of it to get on the sideline so that the doctor can take a little better look at it, I'm sure. So Keaton Smiley in to replace Ken Sims at the left cornerback spot. Gaylord comes out wide right for Minnesota. Andy Hare in the slot right. The running back's behind Foggy. Our David Puck, the fullback. And Valdez Bear, the tailback. First down to the 30-yard line. The fullback, David Putt, getting good yardage. About a nine-yard gain before he was stopped by Jay Norvell. Well, Minnesota came out of that wishbone formation and is trying Puck up the middle. They did that last week, and, of course, Puck had a pretty decent game against the University of Michigan, and obviously they're going to have to come out of that wishbone formation. There's Puck through the hole and a nine-yard gain. So it is second down, a little more than a yard to go for the first down the 39-yard line of Minnesota. The fake is to punt. The handoff is to Baylor. He's got the first down. All the way out of the 49-yard line. Lost the ball, but after the whistle had been blown, Devon Mitchell and Nate Creer making the stop for Iowa. Now, Minnesota really got a little bit better field position on that kickoff return, and that's their first first down of the day, and they moved the ball quite well in those last two plays against that Iowa defense. You know, we've already talked about the Harmon brother combination on Iowa. David Puck, the fullback for Minnesota, has a brother, J.J., who's a backup linebacker for Iowa. So kind of an inter-family squabble when those two teams play. First down, Minnesota. Again, the fullback, David Puck, tough to bring down. He got all the way down to the 46-yard line before Larry Station finally put an end to his journey. Straight ahead power. What, what probably happened on the first time Minnesota had their ball, had the ball on about the 15-yard line is that they weren't coming off the line of scrimmage. Here's the secondary. Even though the secondary doesn't get into this play, you know, they, they have to come up there and make the stop. There he is right there, that gang tackling. And that's what makes Foggy so dangerous as a passer. He's such a good faker. That's right. And if you get that secondary to commit, you can find some people wide open downfield. Second down, a little more than three yards to go for the first down. 45, the Hawkeyes with a 7-0 lead. It is Puck again. And looks like he got enough for the first down. Jeff Drost, the senior from Waukee, Illinois, uh, Iowa, making the stop. Well, they're going to mark the ball. We're going to probably have uh, a timeout for a measurement by the referee. That's what it is. It's going to be very close to a first down. Might not have gotten enough. Let's see. It's very close. Maybe about an inch short. 
How amazing I am. What eyes you have. <laughs> There's Larry Station, a great All-American linebacker. Already this year, he has 100 and 110 tackles. In the last three years, he's had over 100 tackles. Here's Station, playing off the block, getting in on that tackle. He's a great one. So it's now third down, less than a yard to go for the first down. In this running situation, two tight ends in there for Minnesota. The ball at the Iowa 42. Foggy falling straight ahead for the first down, I think. We'll wait till they unveil to be sure. Larry Station right there to make the stop. All depends on where the referee sets it. Or should I say the linesman. The referee is in the white hat. All the other gentlemen have other names. There's uh, the umpire, the head linesman, the line judge, the field judge, the side judge, and the back judge. But the head man is the referee with the white hat. And they're going to measure this one. I think uh, it looks like he's going to be short again. Old Hawkeye looking. Oh, I can't call me a Hawkeye. I got to call me an Eagle Eye. Of course, a lot of other big games going on in the Big Ten this afternoon, including that traditional battle between Ohio State and Michigan, Purdue, Indiana, battle for the old Oaken Bucket, Michigan State's at Wisconsin, Illinois at Northwestern. And they're short again. <laughs> this, <laughs> watch Foggy, he makes an inch this time. And I would imagine that Minnesota will go for it. So a couple of plays ago, it was third down, about three inches to go for the first down. Now it's fourth down, about two inches to go for the first down. And the Gophers will go for it. The ball right on the 42-yard line of Iowa. Ricky Foggy pitching to Valdez Taylor, and Baylor does have the first down. He got to the 40-yard line before Jay Norvell made the tackle for Iowa and he almost got caught for a loss. Boy, you're right. Uh, the, the defensive line for Iowa sure did come across that line of scrimmage. They had a short yardage, short yardage defense up there, came across the line of scrimmage. Good blocking up front, but just great effort by Valdez Baylor got that first down and Minnesota continues to move the ball first and 10 on the 40. Just under seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Iowa with a seven nothing lead. First down Minnesota at the Iowa 40. Foggy out of that wishbone pitching to Baylor. Baylor got maybe a half a yard, and that's all. Devon Mitchell, number 21, Bruce Gear, number 94, making the stop for Iowa. Well, Jay Norval, a defensive corner man from Iowa, just came popping in there, and he whacked on Ricky Foggy and made him get rid of the ball. And then the rest of the defense was able to center around Valdez Baylor for no game. On the last three carries, Minnesota has gained maybe a yard total. Maybe four inches. It's a second down and ten. That wish going again. Taking the handoff to Puck, throwing for him. He's got it, but he's got the bounds of 28-yard line. Keaton Smiley, number 44, the freshman in there replacing Ken Sims, back in the coverage for Iowa. Out of the wishbone, Mel Anderson down the field. There was a fake to the fullback puck and a throw downfield to Mel Anderson, 12 yards, a first down. Minnesota moving the ball. So the Golden Gophers now inside the 30-yard line, first down. On that wishbone again. Foggy pitching to inside the 25 down to the 24 yard line before he meets a man named Larry Station. See this is one way you can do a job against Iowa and a guy like uh, Chuck Long is hold the ball. I mean offensively if they can hold the ball and continue to have that possession that means Iowa doesn't get their hands on the ball and they'll be in the game all day. A five yard game in that last carry by Hare so it'll be second down and five now at the 24 yard line. The Gophers have now gotten themselves at least in the field goal range for Chip Lomilla. Foggy pitching to Baylor. Baylor lost his footing. That's 
the first sign of the slipperiness of the field we've seen this afternoon. He just could not maintain his footing. It's going to be a loss of about two yards. Well, he was he was pretty well defensed anyway, and, and so was that uh, option play into the sideline here, and he slipped and fell. Of course, now it's going to be third down and seven, a passing situation for Ricky Foggy. Five carries for eight yards now for Valdez Bader. Gaylord wide left. Two tight ends in there. Despite it being a passing situation. Third down, seven. And the 25-yard line. Foggy giving to David Pack and the big fullback pulls ahead. He's got the first down. Larry Station making the stop for Iowa. Puck is tough to bring down. Oh, he sure there. is, and he's he's had a great game so far against this Iowa defense. He's just found some really good holes, in, but that's all up to Ricky Foggy, either to give the ball to him or to take the ball out of his out of his stomach, because that's that's the way they ride the fullback into the into the line of scrimmage. And if he sees it's open, he leaves it there. If not, he takes it out, and pitches it out to uh, to Valdez Baylor. Puck now with four carries for 25 yards. First down at the 18 yard line. This is Baylor, and Baylor gets inside the 15. George Davis, number 37, making the stop for Iowa. And they continue to pound against that defense. Here are the two defensive coaches. Now watch them, they both give the signals here, only one of them's live. So nobody knows which one's gonna get the signal. And of course, it, it goes into, there's there's a signal. We don't know which one's, get, look at now, who, which one's live, we don't know. And they change back and forth throughout the game to try to keep the opposition fooled. Second down, seven. 15 yard line. A very long, sustained drive so far by Minnesota. Couldn't find any running room. Larry Station right there to pull him down at the 15. No gain. Station did a number on him that time. Did he say you ain't going no place? Set right down here on my on my 15 yard line. You ain't going no place else. Station, a very good player despite not having great size. He's 5'11, 227. Very smart. Very smart, very quick, and those middle linebackers have to be that way, but he's also very tough. The word on Ken Sims, the injured player, he's got a sprained right ankle, so he'll be out for the remainder of the game. That's better than a knee. Third down, seven. 2.43 to go in the opening quarter. Iowa leading at 7-0. Ricky Foggy still has it. The end around to Melvin Anderson. Anderson is going to be brought down by Devon Mitchell, number 21, and Keaton Smiley, number 44. Lou Holtz trick play didn't fool Iowa, did it? No, it certainly didn't. It didn't fool Devon Mitchell. Devon Mitchell had Anderson man-to-man -man all the way, all the way from the left side, all the way over to the right side. No one could get a block out on him. Didn't see Devon Mitchell coming from the inside. Tackled Anderson for a two-yard loss. We'll have a field goal try by Minnesota. Chip Lowe Miller will attempt this one from the 25-yard line, a 35-yard effort. the boot by Low Miller. It is good. And so the Golden Gophers managed to get three points out of it. And with a minute 54 to go in the opening quarter, it's now Iowa 7, Minnesota 3. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Back at Kinnick Stadium, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Leading at 7-3 after the 35-yard field goal by Chip Lomino. That's their defensive coach, and what he's saying to him is, let's not give up 52 yards like we did on that last drive and let Minnesota hold on to the ball seven minutes and 34 seconds. 15 plays, and I'll tell you what, that's what Minnesota has to do in order to keep Iowa off the scoreboard. Ball control. Yes, it is. And, of course, of course, that's what the wishbone's all about. Low Miller ready to kick it off now for Minnesota. Kevin Harmon, Quinn Early, awaiting the kickoff for Iowa. And this one will be caught in the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. It is a chilly day. You can see the Bretts, the players down on the field. And if you want to take a look at the broadcast booth, you can see the Bretts up here, too. I'll tell you one thing, though. It, it isn't cold once you start the football game. I know the game has started already, and I'm ready to take my coat off. I'm ready to play, partner. Well, these fans are ready. The atmosphere really electric around 
Iowa City this weekend. And now the Hawkeyes have it at their own 20-yard line. Long to throw on first down. Has plenty of protection. That pass is incomplete. The intended receiver, the tight end, Mike Flagg. Too much protection. Nobody, nobody was open. Tried to throw it to Big Mike Flag on, a, on an out pattern, but Mike really wasn't looking. So Chuck Long just threw the ball away. Chuck Long, an amazingly consistent passer throughout his career, hitting over 60% of his passes in his four-year career. You know, interestingly enough, too, if you watch him throw the ball, he doesn't throw it straight overhand. He throws it sort of sidearm, and, and, and that's what gives him, they feel, such great accuracy. Second down and ten. Long back to throw again. Again, he's well protected. Now he's in a little trouble. Scrambling toward that sideline. He'll hang on to it. And he picked up some pretty good yardage. He stepped out of bounds back to the 24-yard line. So the forward progress will be moved back to the 24. Trent Tripp, number 77, made the eventual tackle on Long, but he had already stepped out of bounds. A seven-yard gain. I'm sure that Hayden Fry doesn't want him to run the ball too much either. Here's a score. Ten Ken Tennessee, six. Kentucky, nothing. Tennessee hoping to get to the Sugar Bowl this year. My old pal, uh, oh, here's a good one. Notre Dame, uh, seven to nothing over LSU. I was going to say Johnny Majors uh, was an old All-American at the same time I was. Way back. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> He's the coach of Tennessee, by the way. Third down and six. Minute 39 remaining in this first quarter. I was going to take a time out here. Chuck Long will head for the sidelines, talk things over with Hayden Fry. And so with a minute 39 to go in the first quarter, Iowa leading 7-3. to three. All kinds of possibilities today for the Rose Bowl. But the easiest one for Iowa is just win the game, and they're on the way. We'll be right back. A lot of viewers all around the country watching this game. If there is no station in an area carrying this game, we've got some satellite dish parties going on down in Texas and in Atlanta, Georgia. Iowa, Minnesota fans. This is almost picked off. It bounced high in the air, and Larry Joyner had an excellent chance to intercept it. He just couldn't find the handle. Not very well thrown by Chuck Long. He tried to hit his big tight end, Mike Flagg, up the middle, threw it right into the zone defense, and... Minnesota knocked it down and almost interception, but they'll get the ball back because Iowa's in a punting situation. The intended receiver was the tight end Mike Flagg. So Gary Pascubala, left-footed punter. It's a good, high, long kick all the way down to the 30-yard line. Andy Hare lost the ball. Minnesota recovered it back in the 33. Howard made the recovery for Minnesota. Very alert play by Howard. Andy here was hit hard. The ball popped out. Minnesota. Watch his good hard hit on Andy here. Right here. Boom. That was a 46-yard kick. And it was a good one. A three-yard return and the fumble recovered back at the 33-yard line. An alert play by Howard. Now Minnesota has to get the ball moving again like they did on that last drive, get some points on the scoreboard. This game still very close. Iowa not able to move the ball against that Minnesota defense. And as Iowa's defensive unit takes the field, Kenny Sims, the left quarterback, is back out there. He's had the ankle wrapped. First down, Minnesota. The fullback, David Puck, pulls his way out to about the 38-yard line. Larry Station. Making the stop for Iowa. When I said before, Larry Puck was having the, uh, uh, I mean, David Puck was having one of those great games. It is for him because he really doesn't gain more than 20 or 30 yards in a football game, and he already has 31 on five carries today. He is a pre-med student at Minnesota, as is Peter Najarian on the defense. Well, he's cutting up the defense right today, I'll guarantee you that. He was going to be a surgeon. Second down and four. First down at the 46-yard line of Iowa. Devon Mitchell finally made the stop for the Hawkeyes. But what sprung Valdez Baylor was Alan Holt. Now watch Alan Holt, number 17, out front here. 
He'll make a great block out here. Allen Holt right there. Good block. And that just brings Valdez Baylor out around the left right side for 15 yards. It's first, first down. down at the 46 yard line of Iowa. 7 3. The Hawkeyes leading the Gophers with 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Minnesota has been able to use a lot of time in this first quarter, even though they trail by four. They're trying to get down close, score some more points. The fullback, David Puck, another good game. Inside the 40 yard line, Jay Norvell making the stop for Iowa. Six yarder for David Puck. They keep on getting it going. Now, watch Jay Norville come out here. Great tech. And time has expired now in quarter number one. So we've got a good one going at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. At the end of a quarter, it's Iowa 7, Minnesota 3. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Banner referring to Floyd of Rosedale. The they're right. getting him some roses. They want him back home here in, in Iowa. They said that's where he started 50 years ago. They need him back this year in order to get into the Rose Bowl. I Floyd belongs to Minnesota right now because they won last year's game. Second down and four. And the Iowa 40-yard line. Foggy faking to Puck. He's got the first down all the way down to the 31-yard line. Keaton Smiley, number 44, making the stop for Iowa. Puck has run the ball about six times up the middle. Now what has happened is the Iowa defense is sort of centering on Puck and that time when uh, when Ricky Foggy saw that the defense was coming back down on on David Puck he just kept the ball and went for nine yards and a first down on the 31 yard line Minnesota trailing by four but they have been moving the ball against Iowa Foggy handing off and Ed Penn is brought down by Jeff Drost. Penn's a freshman. A lot of, a lot freshmen of different on this players Minnesota he play. plays uh, in the football game. Uh, uh, Lou Holt certainly puts a lot of people in at those at those halfback positions. The Golden Gophers outgaining the Hawkeyes in that first quarter. And they have a drive going here in the opening minutes of the second quarter. Second down seven. Ball at the 28-yard line of Iowa. at the 34-yard line. Number 94, Bruce Gear, a senior from Madison, Wisconsin, got through. Hayden Fry, when he played against Ohio State, said, boy, that crowd noise made it tough for me to play. And that's exactly what happened to Ricky Foggy that time. Iowa was jumping in the defense. The crowd noise was up high. Ricky Foggy was trying to get out of it, call an audible. He couldn't call the audible, so he had to go along with the play. It was defense well by Iowa. A loss on the play. It'll be third down, 13. Ball back at the 33-yard line now. Anderson comes out wide left. Andy Heron a slot left. Valdez Taylor wide right. Foggy with a straight drop in. Some trouble back there. It's brought down by George Davis and John Breeze. And that quarterback sack may have taken the Golden Gophers out of field goal range. I think it did because it's now on the 38-yard line. What's the blitz coming? Nowhere to go for Ricky Foggy except to the ground. They are now in a punting position and a big play by that Iowa defense. Well, they're in a position like this on the field at the 38-yard line. They use Chip Miller as their punter rather than Adam Kelly. He tries to get that ball down close to the goal line. You've got to watch out for trickery, though. You know how Lou Holtz is. You never know what's going to come up next. Bill Happel and Ronnie Harmon. Back there awaiting a very short kick off the side of Low Miller's foot. And it'll go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That was only a 16-yard punt. Even though it was only 16 yards, if he would have got it to the end zone, it would have come out to the 20 anyway. So the Hawkeyes will put it in play now at their own 22-yard line, leading at 7-3 with 12-19 remaining in the first half. Back here at Kinnick Stadium, there's the man with the best seat in the house. Now that's the way to watch a football game. Isn't that our producer? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he 
said, I've done everything I got to do today. I'm just going to sit here and watch the game and enjoy myself. First out of the 22-yard <laughs> line for Iowa. Chuck Long back to throw on first down. Again, he's well protected. Now he's not. He lost the ball. And who's got it? I think Minnesota recovered. Larry Joyner made the hit on Chuck Long, who lost the ball, and I think Minnesota got it. It's a close one. There, There's a big fight on the field. Oh, Iowa has it. Iowa got it back. The Gophers Very were over. indicating that they had the ball. But when they finally unpiled, there was a Hawkeye on top of it. From the back. Boy, oh, watch Joyner come in here. Long did not see him. So the recovery made by Mike Haight, the offensive right tackle, a senior from Dyersville, Iowa. And what a big play that is. That really could have turned the whole tide of this football game. It's back on the 18-yard line, second down at 14. The fullback, David Hansen, who was also very tough to bring down. He got out to the 22-yard line before Larry Joyner made the stop. We said prior to this game, this Minnesota team always plays Iowa tough, and they certainly have in the last 25 years. We mentioned that Iowa's only won six of them, and today is no exception. This defense for Minnesota playing a real fine football game against one of the greatest offensive teams in the nation. And bouncing back after a disappointing showing last week against Michigan. Yeah, Michigan just annihilated them. I didn't think they'd ever be able to come back, and they do have an awful lot of injuries. They're down in 10. Long back to throw. Pass is caught by the 22. He's out to the 34-yard line. He's got the first down. Donovan Small making the tackle for Minnesota. A very talented ball player, oh, Ronnie this is, Harmon. This is a screen to the right. A screen to the right. And watch Bob Kratz, number 70, make that great block behind him. That was the turning point of this play. And, of course, a great run by Ronnie Harmon for the first down. He knows where it is, doesn't he? And he gets that first down after a 12-yard game. Harmon from quite a football family. He's had a great career here in Iowa. His younger brother, Kevin. A junior who backs up Ronnie and an older brother Derek played at Cornell and now a member of the San Francisco 49ers. This is Harmon again. To about the 41 yard line before he was forced out of bounds on the Iowa sideline. Stops, he starts, he dashes right, he dashes left. But the one thing he the one thing he always knows what to do, he knows how to get up the field. And a lot of a, a lot of backs they'll be they'll be jitterbugging right and left and never get up the field. But one thing about Harmon. He'll, he'll do all of this little dancing, but still pick you up six or seven yards like he did on the last play. He's carried the ball five times now for 34 yards. He's already over 1,000 yards for the season. We know that he can break one at any time. Second down and three, the ball at the 40-yard line. Harmon again. He's got the first down. Out across the 45-yard line. Donovan Small. And Peter Najarian making the tackle. Well, Bruce Holmes is a really a, a, a good linebacker, and Bruce Holmes takes a shot at him at the line of scrimmage, and Ronnie Harmon just sort of twists and turns right out of there, out of his grasp for a first down. Now, now here's Holmes. Now watch Holmes. He'll come in here. He takes. He doesn't clasp his arms around Holmes, and he really Holmes just could not make the tackle on Ronnie Harmon. It was just a great play by Ronnie Harmon. Holmes playing today despite an ailing shoulder. First down, Iowa. Ten minutes to go, first half at 7-3. Hawkeyes leading it. The pass is caught. Nice reception by Bill Happel at the 48-yard line. Matt Martinez back on the coverage. That's Happel's first catch today. Seven-yard gain. Little turnout pass on the sideline. Those flankers love to do that because they're one-on-one -on -one out there on the defensive back. And he went down the field seven yards with a great thrower like Chuck Long. He just popped it right there for a seven-yard gain. Long now six out of nine for 50 yards. We're going to have all kinds of records broken today. Chuck Long's going to set about a half dozen of them here this afternoon. One of the truly great quarterbacks in college football. David Hudson looking for running room is swarmed under after a gain of about two yards. Peter Najeri in the first man to get to him. It'll be close to a first down. Very Hudson tough football game today. I mean, they're both playing really tough, good, hard football. That's in a sophomore out of Waxahachie, Texas. Waxahachie. I know it well, right outside of Dallas. 
It's just shy of the first down. Third down, about a half a yard to go. Hudson's got the first down. He just barely got it, but he's across the 45 to the 44-yard line. Steve Thompson making the stop for the Gophers. Both teams defensively giving ground grudgingly. And with the first down. And a very well-played football game, too. <laughs> we don't have any penalties. Have not, not had a penalty, as I can recall at this point. And there's some really good, hard-hitting football going on down that field. A very spirited rivalry has been for years between these two schools. First down at the 43. Long, rolling right. And Happel trying for the reception, didn't come up with it. He was juggling it as he went out of bounds. But he caught it. Uh, that's great concentration by Happel. He just ran out of room on the sideline. He, it hits his hands just before he goes out of bounds. Cannot hang on to it until he gets onto the ground. And that by that time, he's out of bounds. Look at great concentration. Great stretch. Look at He just doesn't quite have it on his hands. But when he caught the ball, he was out of bounds. Long now, 6 out of 10 for 50 yards. That's right about his percentage for the year, 60%. He's actually above that, about 65%. Second down and 10. He's also completed 22 passes in a row this year. Oh. And there is the first penalty flag of the afternoon. Looked like somebody jumped a little bit early for Minnesota, possibly their nose guard. No, it's going to be against Iowa. The right tackle uh, from, uh, from Iowa just pulled his hand up a little too quickly. So they'll walk off five yards against the Hawkeyes, putting the ball back in the 48-yard line. That's the right tackle. Second down. Five yards, the procedure. Doesn't look like much now, but when it puts you in a second down and 15 situation rather than a, than a second down and 10 situation, it's, it's very big. Apple comes out wide right. Second down, 15. That's Halverson in motion. Long handing off to Harmon. Look at Harmon change direction. He didn't get many yards there. Only gained about two. But he could have been stopped back at the line of scrimmage. He got those two yards on his own. Anthony Burke, Peter Nigerian making the tackle for Minnesota. Well, he's just incredible. He, you know, he reminds me of a rabbit, you know, a little cottontail running around the briar patch, you know. <laughs> running away from everybody. The plays are shuttled back and forth on the sideline. Scott Helverson and Quinn Early alternate at the wingback spot. We're having fun here in Iowa City. Early comes out wide right. It's third down, 13. Apple is in motion. Long with good protection. Firing down the field. He's got it for the first down at the 29-yard line. Matt Martinez and Joel Brown back to the coverage for Minnesota. Big play. Roll out right. Here's Chuck Long. We see the secondary. They go into a zone defense. And Chuck Long rolls out to his right, and he finds Happel down here on your screen. You'll see if Happel make an out move. That's called a drag out. And Happel is wide open. Chuck Long sees him. First down for Iowa on the 30-yard line. 16-yard game. Seven minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Iowa with a 7-3 lead. Long back to throw. He's got time. The pass is caught by Helverson. He's forced out of bounds by Dwayne Dutrell. Scott Helmerson, a senior from Des Moines. They say that Chuck Long don't throw the ball very hard, but when he has to, did you see him stick that one into Helmerson? Amazing accuracy. Throughout the career of Chuck Long. All you have to have is one foot inbound. I had to laugh yesterday, Ron. We met with Hayden Fry, and you were talking about who calls the offensive plays for <laughs> Iowa. He said when they work, they're mine. When they don't, they're his. Well, he calls all the plays offensively. Bonnie Harmon changing direction. Still on his feet inside the 20-yard line. Inside the 15. Finally dragged down from behind at about the 12-yard line by Donovan Small. That's great athletic ability. He started into the line of scrimmage. He stopped. He came back. Watch him now. Watch him dart around like a bunny rabbit. He starts into the line of scrimmage, sees that it's that it's stopped up there. He stops again, and he's off to the races. And he picks up a first down on the 12-yard line for Iowa. Just a great run. He's got eight carries now for 54 yards. The first All-American team of the season was named recently by the Football News. Three members of this Iowa club on it, including... 
Ronnie Harmon along and with Chuck Long and Larry so. Station. Rightly so. It's a first down. Harmon again. Up the middle this time. Gained about five yards before Martinez and the Jerrion brought him down, shy of the five yard line. I've seen Harmon play before for the last three or four years, and he just never ceases to amaze me the way he runs and how loose he is, and, and he keeps moving back and forth, but always seems to pick up four or five yards. And that is a passing record again for Chuck Long, the Big Ten record, closing in on 10,000 yards. Wow. Harmon. To about the three-yard line, Matt Martinez, and on the tackle for Minnesota, Peter Najarian also there. He's been there all day. Let's make one thing clear about Hayden Fry. Hayden Fry calls all the offensive plays, but he gives Chuck Long the option of calling an audible at any time. You know, we fun about these things, and so does and so does Hayden Fry. But Hayden Fry would take responsibility for anything. He's really a fun guy and makes this game of football a lot of fun. And one thing about the audibles called by Chuck Long, sometimes they're fake audibles. Yeah. <laughs> He's not always changing the play at the line of scrimmage when you see him seemingly calling an audible. Whistles, flags, everything stops. And we'll I think it's against Iowa. Iowa. Again, one of the linemen. So this will bring the ball back to about the nine-yard line. Big play right there. It was third and two. It will be now third and about eight yards to go, seven or eight yards to go. So now it's a third down and goal. The ball just inside the nine-yard line. Big play if Minnesota can hold Iowa out of the out of the end zone on this. Uh, on this drive and stay only one touchdown behind and there's 535 left here in the first half. Apple goes out wide left. Quinn Early comes out wide right. The backs are split now. Long back to throw. Firing toward the end zone. It's incomplete. He overthrew Bill Apple. And so Minnesota is able to stop Iowa here. The Hawkeyes will have to try to settle for three. Matt Martinez, number seven, just covered Happel very well. Look at him up on the top of the top of your screen. He's right in front of him, and Long had to throw the ball long in order not to have it intercepted in the end zone by Martinez. So now Rob Hutland will attempt a field goal. This will come from the 16-yard line, a 26-yard attempt. If it's good, it'll be a new Iowa season record. He's going for a 17th field goal of the season. There's the boot, and it is good. Rob Hoplin has just broken a record set originally by Tom Nickel just one year ago. So the Hawkeyes are back to a seven-point lead over Minnesota. It is 10-3 Iowa with 5.15 remaining in the first half. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. That's 15 seconds remaining in quarter number two here at Kinnick Stadium. Iowa, Iowa only... with a 10-3 lead over Minnesota. We'll be right back. Ready now for the Iowa kickoff after the 26-yard field goal by Rob Hutland. Possession by Iowa, 17 plays, 70 yards, 704 on that last drive. They kept the ball seven minutes, but really a, a, a great tribute to the defense of the Gophers. They have been hurt, and of course they held the Iowa Hawkeyes to three points on that last drive. Eugene Gaylord waiting back at the one-yard line for the kick from Marv Cook. A good, high, long kick into the end zone. And Minnesota will bring it out to the 20. So the Gophers with 5.15 remaining in the first half, trailing by seven. A lot of good college football going on today, and most of them are for the championships, as this one is right here. The Iowa Hawkeyes, if they win or tie this game, they go to the big Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Officially, bids for all the other bowl games will be coming out later this afternoon. A lot of rumors, of course, abounding as to who's going where. <laughs> Officially? Kind of hard to keep these secrets, I think. <laughs> I Minnesota hoping to go to the Independence Bowl against the winner of the Clemson-South Carolina game. David Puck not finding much running room that time. 
John Breeze, Larry Station, and about half of the rest of the defensive unit. Purdue, Indiana tied. Baylor three, Texas nothing in the first period. Here's one, Princeton over Cornell, your old school in the first period, seven to nothing. Cornell will come back, I'm sure. Yeah, they're trying to win their fourth in a row, by the way, <laughs> the Big Red. They've turned things around a little they bit. They sure up there. have. Second down and eight. Minnesota out of the 34 yard line before Nate Creer and Larry Station made the stop for Iowa. 13 yard gain by Valdez Baylor. Just a fake into the line to the fullback. Holds the defense. Screen out here to the left. Valdez Baylor. Some good blocking out front. Good catch by Valdez Baylor for that first down on the 33 yard line. Valdez knows what to do with it. He gets right up the field very quickly. Baylor's had a very good year for Minnesota this year. Running the ball, catching the passes. He's a senior. First down. Boggy back to throw. Almost sacked. Got rid of it. Melvin Anderson, the intended receiver. Larry Station was on his knees. It is a lateral, so the ball will be out of bounds on the 24-yard line. The lateral was thrown. Uh, by Ricky Foggy. It was a screen pass to the flanker out on the right to Anderson. It was a backward pass, so therefore it will be out of bounds uh, and, and it'll be second down and 20 on the 25. And you saw Larry Station almost get to the quarterback and really hurry that play and force it. That was the blitz was on. Station, Station by the way, can do that on his own. I was just going to say that. You and I think alike, don't we? Aiden Fry telling us yesterday that Station is such an instinctive player that if he feels he can get in there in a blitz, they just let him go. Firing downfield for Anderson incomplete out near midfield. Melvin Anderson covered by Larry Station. Boy, that Larry Station is all over the field, isn't he? Yes, he certainly is. Ricky Foggy uh, doing a good job rolling out to his left. And now watch down the field. Mel Anderson comes across. If Ricky Foggy would have continued to run, obviously he wouldn't have got very far, but that ball's catchable. It was a little bit behind Mel Anderson, but those are the kind that those flankers and tight ends got to catch. You, you know, anybody can catch it when it's right in your hands and you're running perfectly down the field, but those are the kind you got to catch in order to make the big plays and come out with a win. Now a very difficult situation for Minnesota. Third down and 18 yards to go for the first down at their own 24-yard line. Station after Foggy. He got rid of it. But the pass is incomplete. And you talk about a quarterback being under pressure. Richard Pryor and Larry Station both were in there, right on top of Ricky Foggy, almost from the moment he got the ball. You don't have to be very good when you have that great quickness that Larry Station has. What's the blitz right here? Comes through the line, gets his hands on, on Ricky Foggy, and then continues to chase him down the side. Luckily enough, Ricky Foggy is so strong that he could get rid of the ball, and it'll be a fourth down and about 19 yards to go for Minnesota punting situation. And with Long playing quarterback, they could certainly get in. You saw Foggy get a pretty good hit after getting rid of the ball. He's shaken up a bit on the Minnesota sideline. There's the kick now by Adam Kelly. Kind of a low line drive kick. And they're going to let it roll. Takes a good bounce from Minnesota inside the 35 all the way down to the 32-yard line. And it's still rolling. And they're going to give it air moment they can before downing it at the 31 yard line a 45 yard kick for Adam Kelly it is 10 3 Iowa with 340 remaining in the second quarter this is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television half and you know long could get it in from anywhere at any time he's great at a two-minute drill he is back to throw on first down firing down Small and Dwayne Dutrell finally made the tackle. No sooner said than done. It's almost like we put the play in for, for Chuck Long. And down the field goes Ronnie Harmon. Ronnie Harmon is one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker out here to the right. And he gets behind him. And when he catches the ball, as we said, he knows what to do with it. He gets down the field. First down. 
on the 19-yard line. That play covered 50 yards. You know who he beat? Joe Christofferson. He's the linebacker that said something against him in the other, the other game of the paper. The catch made by Scott Helverson at the 10-yard line. It'll be second down and one. Matt Martinez back in the coverage. So very quickly, Iowa's moved immediately into scoring range with three minutes to go in the first half. I had so much to say about him, we almost missed that last play, didn't we? Besides the folks here enjoying this game, all the Iowa fans that are on hand, our games are carried over in Honolulu and the Iowa basketball team, if they're up this early over there. Opened up their season last night with a victory over Hawaii Hilo, 80 to 69. And I'm sure they're happy with what's transpired here so far. Harmon on the far sideline. Didn't have a whole lot of room over there, but still managed to gain about three yards. Some of the Iowa fans thought there might have been a late hit over there. Anthony Burke, Joe Christofferson making the tackle. Got 66 yards in 11 carries, but more importantly, he can really catch the ball and run with it when he gets away with it. When he gets down that field. And it'll be first and goal from the seven and a half yard line. And another Iowa record has fallen here at Kinnick Stadium. As we said, there'll be plenty of them today. It is a first down at the seven yard line. Ten three Hawkeyes, two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. at the five-yard line. Actually shy of the five-yard line, about a half-yard, Donovan Small. I guess Long called that one. <laughs> As Hayden Fry said, if he doesn't get in for a touchdown on that, on that bootleg, he called it, not me. <laughs> Thanks, Hayden. <laughs> well, we really didn't need to hear that, did we, Ron? <laughs> the temperature I don't know. I'm pretty warm. I'm really into this game. I, I love to see championship football games, and this is championship caliber today. Both teams playing a very good, hard, clean football game. Of course, you former Green Bay Packers, <laughs> very familiar with this kind of weather. Now, this sort of warm. This is short sleeve shirt day. Law now over 10,000 career yards. 10,007 career yards. He called the timeout there, stopping the clock with 223. And with Iowa leading it by a 10-3 margin over Minnesota. Of course, the only blemish on Iowa's record all year, that loss in the rain to Ohio State. And of course, Ohio State played a great football game defensively against them, and, and it's the only game that Chuck Long was intercepted more than once in a game. And he was intercepted three times, and Ohio State just played one of their better football games uh, of the year. And Hayden Trial can right out and tell you that one of the factors in that game was simply the crowd noise. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Got a lot of Big Ten people, you know, going to going to some of the bowl games. Uh, we're looking at Michigan State at the All-American Bowl uh, on December 31st. I think our station's going to handle it, aren't they? WTBS, the Superstation, will carry that game. Georgia Tech, Michigan State, the projected teams in the All-American Bowl. Be on at 8 p.m. on December 31st, you know, so tune in. That'll be a good football game. We've seen Michigan State play, and they are very good, and so is Georgia Tech. They're fun to watch, both of them. Oh, they're having fun here in Iowa City. The Iowa band had to forego their pregame show so they could sweep the snow off the field. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Football is a little more important than band right here in Iowa City. Niles Kinnick Stadium. A lot of his records may be broken today. Some of his interceptions back in the late 30s. One of the great All-Americans and a Heisman Trophy winner, as a matter of fact, uh, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. That Iowa band will be on the field at halftime. We'll be taking a look at them. It is second down. Goal to go from the six-yard line. The fullback, David Hudson, about three yards down to the three. Doug Mueller, Peter Nigerian making the stop. Boy, Iowa wants to get this one in bad. They don't want to go in after two drives have been stalled uh, down around the four or five-yard line. They certainly want to get seven points on the scoreboard. Five carries now for 11 yards for Hudson. Two this tight may, ends in there now. This may be the most important play of the football game right here. Ball just inside the four-yard line. Third down and goal. They line up in that power eye. Small picking. Harry Joyner coming from the touchdown pass. Throw the Mike flag the tight end.
we said, Chuck Long can spot just about anybody, anywhere, anywhere, and he's got a big target in Mike Flagg. That's his, that's the fifth touchdown of the season for Mike Flagg, a four-yard touchdown. He gets in a big play for Iowa. The extra point attempt by Rob Hoblin is good. And with a minute 40 to go in the first half, Iowa has opened up a 14-point lead. It's now 17-3. The Hawkeyes lead the Gophers. We have a report that the temperature down in the field right now is 15 degrees, so indeed it has gotten quite a bit colder as this ball game has gone on, but the fans not minding it at all as with long all as this the, keeps happening. With all the jubilance in, in touchdown pass, passes like this, the flag wide open in the end zone. Touchdown. Great throw and a great play by Chuck Long. They have just made the announcement here in the public address system that Chuck Long has now passed for over 10,000 yards in his career. And that earns him a standing ovation. Harmon makes a good fake into the line of scrimmage. And then, of course, his great rollout by Chuck Long getting away from the rush that uh, Minnesota was trying to put on. But more importantly, he found big Mike Flagg in the end zone for the touchdown. Four yards, six points on the scoreboard. Extra point good. And now Iowa leads 17-3. Only a minute 40 remaining in the first half. Getting ready now for the Iowa kickoff. Marv Cook will do the kicking for Iowa. Eugene Gaylord, the deep back for Minnesota. There's the boot toward Gaylord. About three yards deep in the end zone. He was thinking about it, but changed his mind. He thought for about a half a step and said, I don't think I better do this. So the ball will come out to the 20 yard line. Now we'll see if Minnesota with less than two minutes to go here in this first half can pick up any more points. This is not one of their fortes. It only took two minutes for Iowa on that last drive. Of course, the big play, that 50 yard pass to Ronnie Harmon. We mentioned, though, that Chuck Long can do it to you at any time, any place, anywhere on the football field. And he's done it all year long. And a lot of them in a comeback situation one against Michigan got it down there in a the position where a field goal was kicked and won the game 12 to 10 looking out of the eye formation now Alan Holt is in the quarterback Ricky Foggy was shaken up on that last series his pass to Andy Harris complete but it's good only for about two yards Nate Creer making the stop so Ricky Foggy is out of the game right now and Alan Holt the freshman from Miami we had taken over a quarterback we had mentioned that Ricky Foggy went to the sideline, had sort of a bad arm the last time he threw the ball because of Lurie Station's hard hit on him. Of course, in these Holt. situations in the past, we've seen with a little bit of time left, we've seen Lou Holtz go to Allen Holt before. He's a little bit better passer yep. than Ricky Foggy. Good play. Second down, seven. Valdez Baylor takes the pitch, looks for running room, finds very little. Got maybe a yard. Big Jeff Drost, 6'5", 286-pound senior from Waukee, Iowa, making the tackle. The clock continues to move. Only 45 seconds showing now. Eight carries, 28 yards in the day for Valdez Baylor. Sort of surprised Iowa didn't use their last timeout. Clock continues to move, 30 seconds. It's a third down and five. You might as well call it third down and 75. Bolt firing toward Gaylord. He's out of bounds. The pass incomplete. The clock will stop with 19 seconds remaining. However, it's fourth down. You don't want to give the ball back to Chuck Long in any position, especially when you when you have those great guns like Ronnie Harmon and and Big Mike Flagg and Scott Helverson and Bill Happel. There's so just great 19 receivers. seconds left. Adam Kelly will check in to do the punting. Bill Happel awaits it. We'll be looking at the Hawkeye marching band. Uh, kind of a wrap-up of the way things have gone in the Big Ten. I'm sure you're going to enjoy that set to music. We'll also be talking with Fred Sodwiedel of the Rose Bowl Committee. He's the vice president of the Rose Bowl Committee. The boot by Kelly will be down to about the 42-yard line. A 30-yard kick for Adam Kelly, and now with 11 seconds remaining in the first half, we'll see whether Chuck Long puts it up for grabs here. 
Well, Hayden Fry said he likes to have a lot of fun. I'd like to see him put it up and have a lot of fun here. Hayden Fry says no matter which unit I have out there, the first unit, the second unit, or the third unit, we throw the ball all week in practice. Why not do it in the games? <laughs> He's a throwing team. Well, there's not much this Iowa team can't do. They can throw, they can run, their defense is sparkled. And they have a lot of experience, as you mentioned before. What did you say, 17 seniors playing in this football game? 17 lose. starters. Sure. Well, I'll be Almost the whole with offensive team. On first down, Long is back to throw. Almost fell down in the slip. Turf completed the pass anyway to Scott Hopperson. And he has stopped at the 47-yard line. The timeout will stop the clock with four seconds remaining. Iowa calls the a timeout. Are they going to try a 60-yard field goal? He is. <laughs> so here's a 61-yard field goal attempt coming from Rob Hovland. He's kicking with the win. It is not his longest attempt of the year. He attempted a 70-yard field goal earlier this year. Didn't make it. But he has connected once from over 50 yards. This is one out of two is a 61 yard attempt. He's Look at the concentration. Well. He is thinking, thinking, thinking about getting everything he can into this kick. Great concentration. Great shot there. A 61-yard field goal effort. Just the quiet and being alone right there. Just wonder what's going through his mind at this point. And believe me, when you're concentrating like that, even though there are 70,000 people here, it is quiet. Have nobody in mind except kicking the ball through the uprights. A 61-yard effort by Rob Hovland. Here it comes. Nope. Didn't get enough of it. And time has expired here in the first half. So the Hawkeyes are halfway there. Pasadena awaits January 1st if Iowa can maintain this lead for one more half. It is 17-3. The Hawkeyes over the Golden Gophers. We'll be right back. The fans here at Kinnick Stadium have had a five-year love affair with Chuck Long. And you know, there was a column in the newspaper here yesterday, Chuck Long said that when this game ends today, it's going to be a very emotional moment for him. It's his final appearance before the home folks here at Iowa. And what a nice young man is he, he is. And you know, Hayden Fried said when we asked him yesterday, we said, well, you really did a great job of recruiting him back for this year. He said, I certainly did. Didn't say a word. Not one word did he say. That whole decision was made by Chuck Long and his family. And of course, I think he, he really feels good about it because he said he wanted to take this team back to the Rose Bowl that they lost a couple of years ago. There's a look at the first half statistically. A big gain, a big advantage in yardage for the Iowa Hawkeyes. However, the time of possession in favor of Minnesota. Interesting, isn't it? But, but you also have to remember, Iowa has 17 points on the scoreboard. Minnesota only three. Chuck Long was 12 out of 17 through the air in the first half. He can do it all, 148 yards, one TD. He was sacked once. And on the season now, Chuck Long has thrown 26 touchdown passes. Can't ask for much more than that. The Heisman Trophy could be his. Very much a candidate for it. A score of interest to Minnesota fans as Minnesota possibly heading for an Independence Bowl berth against either Clemson or South Carolina. In the second quarter, South Carolina is leading Clemson today 7-3. To wow. We also want to thank all the Big Ten schools, the SIDs, uh, the Big Ten Commissioner Wayne Duke, and of course Jeff Elliott. I mean, they've done a great job uh, for us this year, and we really thank them. And it's been a it's been a great pleasure. This is our last game on TBS and Big Ten football this year, but we'll be back. Rex Lardner, our director of sports, did all the scheduling of these games, and what a great conference it's been this year. Just top to bottom in the Big Ten, everybody seeming to be an improved football team. Things looking brighter than ever in the Big Ten. And we're all set now for the 
Third quarter kickoff. Eugene Gaylord, the deep man for Minnesota. Kicking off for Iowa, Marv Cook. Iowa leading at 17-3. Marv having a little trouble getting that strap on that he uses for the kickoffs. And now we're underway. A good high deep kick. Gene Gaylord will catch it in the back of the end zone. That's Must have got that go. strap straight. <laughs> he pumped it hard. But well, let's see if Ricky Foggy is back for Minnesota. He was not in there at quarterback the last possession in the first half. I wanted to make mention about that strap that he wears. What he does, he tries to hold the toe up and stiff so that he hits the ball in a perfect position and doesn't waggle his ankle. And Ricky Foggy is back at quarterback for Minnesota. The Golden Gophers, guaranteed. A winning record this year, record of six and four. Ricky Foggy at quarterback, has him lined up in the eye. He's back to throw on first down. Dumps it off to Valdez Baylor. Baylor's got some yardage of first down out of the 33 yard line. Richard Pryor, number 99, a sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey, making the tackle for Iowa. Pryor, from his left end position, was up the field. He got put on some great speed to catch up with Valdez Baylor. A screen out to the right for 13 yards and a first down, and that's the way Minnesota wants to start it out. They got to get those first downs, hang on to the ball, and get some points on the scoreboard. This ball game is far from over. A very heated rivalry always has been between these two schools. First down at the 32-yard line. Foggy giving to his fullback, David Puck. And he is piled up after about a three-yard gain. He got it out across the 35-yard line. Out of that wishbone formation, they must give the ball every once in a while to David Puck to hold those defensive uh, linemen, defensive middle linebackers in the center. Then, of course, they can go out and they can they can they can throw that uh, a quarterback option uh, to the right or to the left. Here are some scores: Notre Dame seven, LSU three in the third period. You saw the one prior to that. And you saw Michigan off to an early three nothing lead over Ohio State. Valdez Baylor. Finding no running room, knocked into his own bench over there at the 40-yard line. Larry Station knocked him out of bounds. Tennessee going for a Sugar Bowl berth with a 14-0 lead over Kentucky. Here's a surprising score. In the first quarter, Iowa State leading Oklahoma State 9-0. Wow. Here Tennessee is 17 going, Iowa. Tennessee going for the SEC championship. Third down, a long three yards to go for the first down. The handoff is to the fullback, David Puck. He's got the first down, getting out across the 35-yard line. David Puck, a native of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, which is right next door to Iowa City here. And as we <laughs> mentioned, he has a younger brother that plays as a reserve linebacker for Iowa. Having a good day. Uh, nine carries, 49 yards. The last one for six, six yards and a first down. Well, what he does is he just holds all that middle of the line, defensive line, so that so that Ricky Foggy and Valdez Baylor can get around uh, the flanks. First down at the 45-yard line. And the penalty marker is down. It'll be a procedure call against Minnesota. Looks like it was against the center. Ray Hitchcock may have moved the ball improperly and the linesman called that play still first down so it is still first down the ball moved back down to the 40 yard line Aiden Fry on the Iowa sideline he has done a remarkable job here at Iowa he's turned this program completely around off to Puck, and this time Puck was only able to get about two yards before Jeff Frost, number 76, made the tackle. You, sp you, you made mention of Hayden Fry, as has Lou Holtz for this Minnesota football team. Done a great job. Ten carries, 52 yards now for David Puck. Ball is marked back at the 43-yard line, so it'll be second down and 12 after a three-yard gain by Puck. Minnesota trailing 17-3. They get something going early in the third quarter. David Puck unable to 
don't get any running room this time. They've been able to stop that play. Iowa has in the second half. They had a little trouble stopping that play in the first half. Well, that George was a, Davis made the tackle. That was a good play by Hap Peterson, number 50, the nose guard. He moved to the left, then moved back over the middle and stuffed the whole middle up, and David Puck didn't have any room to maneuver a one-yard game. So now it'll be third down. A little more than 10 yards to go for the first down. Roselle Richardson has checked into the game for Minnesota. He's the number three quarterback. And he also lines up at times in the fullback position. That ball had been improperly spotted, so that's being taken care of right now. Well, when the wind does blow, and if there's a gust that comes on this turf, it does blow the ball away every once in a while. Now they've corrected the spotting of the ball. And here comes a big third down 11 play for Minnesota. Look at Station come on Foggy. He got rid of it. It's incomplete. And again, it was Larry Station breaking through, putting the pressure on Ricky Foggy. Oh, that's him to get rid of that speed. ball too soon. Tempers are flaring again. Well, the Golden Gophers will have to kick to Iowa as Bill Happel drops back to receive the puck from Adam Kelly. The blitz is on, and look at the great quickness of Lurie Station right in the face of Ricky Foggy. He can't find his receiver, Roselle Richardson, and it falls incomplete. It'll be a fourth down play. Even if that pass had been completed, it would have been about eight yards shy of the first down, so the puck would have been in order anyway. And there is the boot by Kelly, an end over end kick bouncing inside the 30. It'll be down at the 26 yard line by Larry Jordan. And the Hawkeyes have put the ball in play with 11.49 to go in the third quarter. And a 14 point Iowa lead after a 29 yard kick by Adam Kelly. 11.49 to go in the third quarter. Iowa leading Minnesota 17 3. And the Hawkeyes have the ball. Chilly on that field. Line. It's it really chilly is. on that field. We've lost, what, 10 or 11 degrees already since the starting of this game, and it was only 22 degrees then. It seemed at halftime that all of a sudden that wind shifted. It seemed to drop the temperature. Doesn't seem to bother one single soul in the stadium with Iowa leading 17 to 3, does it? Well, there's a couple of Minnesota fans over there that. Well, might be getting if a little you're chilly. from Minneapolis, you're hardy anyway. That's true. <laughs> First down, Iowa. Chuck Long. Back to throw. Firing long downfield for Quinn Early, and it is almost intercepted. Donovan Small, number 35, back in the coverage. Quinn Early, the intended receiver. A good long throw by Chuck Long. But it almost went into the wrong hands. Long has a little bit of pressure on him, but he gets the ball away. Quinn Early now. What's the good play by Quinn Early? He he misses the ball, but he becomes the defender, knocks the ball out of the hands of Donovan Small, and it's and it's just an incomplete pass. It could have been very easily an interception by Donovan Small. That's a very alert play by Early. You don't often see receivers no. do that. Receivers are taught to do that. Second down and ten. Long fakes the handoff to Hudson. Now he throws to his fullback. And Hudson's got a first down. All the way out to the 45-yard line. Small, Dwayne Dutrell, Matt Martinez all back there on the tackle for Minnesota. That big play by Quinn Early knocking the hands out of, knocking the ball out of Donovan Small's hands really makes a big difference. Now all of a sudden, here's the, the little screener over to David Hudson. 17 yards, first down. Iowa starting to move the ball. The ball is marked at the 44-yard line. First and 10. Early comes out wide right. Happel. Also out on the right side. The backs are split now. Hudson and Harmon. Now they'll line up in the eye. The pitch is to Harmon. Heading toward the far sideline and driven right into the Minnesota bench after a gain of about three yards. Did you notice Harmon on that last play? They pitched the ball out to him to the left. He's like a big, big heavyweight boxer. You know, he'll sort of faint into the line of scrimmage and then he'll move to the outside like a heavyweight boxer will faint with his head and faint with his shoulders. This guy does it as good as anybody. 12 carries, 67 yards now for Ronnie Harmon, including that touchdown from five yards out. He already has over 1,000 this year. Second down and seven. Again, it's Harmon, the ball carrier. And again, he's got 
good yardage. Another first down for Iowa. All the way to the 45-yard line of Minnesota. Before Don Pollard in there at a defensive end spot made the stop along with Larry Joyner. Joyner having a good game today. Sure is. And Harmon is shaken up. He began the day playing with uh, an ankle that's been bothering him some. And here's Harmon going through the middle of the line. He not only goes to the outside, he goes to the inside very well. He finds the hole and he just pounds in there for the first down on the 45 yard line. So Ronnie Harmon being tended to out there in the field, that would be a serious loss, wouldn't it? Well, they'd bring another Harmon in. It happened last year. Ronnie Harmon broke a leg last year, and that really hurt Iowa down the stretch. Sure did. Well, while they tend to him, we can tell you that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Big Ten Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. You do that well. I think I've read that <laughs> probably about 1,500 times <laughs> over the last 10 years. It looks like Harmon is fine. He's walking off the field without help. I don't think it was the ankle that time. It looked like nope. he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. It's been bothering him all year, Hayden Fry said, and, uh, and he just hasn't been 100% for the whole year. Well, Ronnie Just Harmon, think if he was 100% where he would be. I was about to say, Ronnie Harmon at wow. 90% is... <laughs> A lot better than a lot of other backs are at 100%. Back to throw long. Went early the intended receiver. Again, a near interception by Donovan Small, who's been close about three times to picking one off. And there is a penalty flag down at the 38-yard line. Well, I, I don't know if they're going to call a penalty uh, defensively there. It may be an inadvertent flag. I think it is. And uh, the, the referee just picked it up, so we aren't going to have a, uh, a flag on that one. Quinn Early on an out pattern. Good play by Donovan Small. Long now, 13 out of 20 for 165 yards, one touchdown. It is second down and 10 at the 45-yard line. That was an inadvertent flag, so no penalty. Long back to throw, firing for his fullback. David Hudson, the intended receiver, incomplete. Larry Joyner got back and gave a pretty good look to Chuck Long there. Was Larry a little Joyner bit. was right in his face. He's the one who caused the fumble earlier in the second period uh, that Chuck Long on a blitz. Uh, Michigan State leading Wisconsin 7 to nothing in the first period. But when Joyner came in, he's got that good blitz. He's not a big guy, but he's got that good speed, just like Larry Station. And Joyner came in and really forced that play. It'll be third down and 10. Utah 7, Brigham Young nothing. Texas 7, Baylor 3 in the second period. Here it is 17-3 Iowa, 11.06 to go, third quarter. Third down, 10. Long with a straight drop, firing down field. Bob first down at the 22-yard line. Joel Brown made the tackle for Minnesota. Not Big much play there. Not much speed, not much talent. Just get op gets open and makes a big play for you in every game. Happel comes from the right side. Long spotted him in the middle. It was uh, it was a pass that could have been very easily intercepted, but but Happel made a great catch in a first down, 23 yards. It's first down on the 22 yard line for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Big play by Happel. First down, just inside the 22. Kevin Harmon in there in place of Ronnie Harmon. And it's Kevin carrying the ball. He's the junior for the Harmon brothers from Laurelton, New York. Joel Brown made the stop. He's carrying on the tradition well, isn't he? Just picked up seven or eight yards. Just as, just as quick as you can blink an eye, he popped right straight through a hole. And he picked up eight yards. It'll be second down and two yards to go for the Iowa Hawkeyes on the 14-yard line. When you look at this Iowa club, we've talked about all the seniors on this club. On their offensive unit, the only returning players next year will be Mark Sindlinger, their center, Bob Cratch, the right guard, Mike Flagg, the tight end, David Hudson, the fullback. But Kevin Harmon will be back. He's a junior. This is Hudson. And Hudson has stacked up at the 10-yard line if they mark his forward progress there, and they will. And that'll be enough for the first down. So it's another Hawkeye first down. That big play on a third down and 10 yards to go. Bill Happel got him into position. Iowa now moving the ball uh, on the 10-yard line, about 11-yard line. They don't have to get into the end zone to get the first down. Peter Najarian again making the tackle on that last play. And with less
less than 10 minutes to go now in the third quarter. Iowa with a first down just inside the 11. Harmon all the way to the five yard line, still on his feet. Touchdown! into the line of scrimmage Kevin Harmon that is just a little bit of extra effort kept moving until he got right to the end zone touchdown Iowa the extra point attempt by Rob Hoplin is good and with that extra point Hoplin has now set a new season record for extra points for an Iowa place kicker it is 24-3 Hawkeyes will be right back this is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television Hawkeye fans having a lot of fun this afternoon. Hawkeye players have a lot of fun for this Iowa team. That's sort of the philosophy of their coach Hayden Fry, who we spoke with earlier. Well, I think you develop it uh, over the years. I've been shot at and hit quite a few times, and uh, if a man doesn't uh, have a sense of humor today, it's, it's a tough old world. And that goes for all of the people watching this show. They know what I'm talking about. We try to have a lot of fun coaching football. Our players have a lot of fun playing, and I think really that's one of the main reasons that we've had uh, success here at the University of Iowa. And having met Hayden Fry and talked with him yesterday, I can imagine that playing for Hayden Fry must be a lot of fun because and he's a very enjoyable guy to be around. Hayden Fry's rosebuds are beginning to blossom with the score 24 to 3 here with 939 left in the third period. Here's the kickoff. Here. And if Minnesota has any upset in mind, they better get going right here. Eugene Gaylord at the four yard line. He's got some room, got it out across the 25 to about the 48. And that's all. Tackle made by Jim Riley or Bruce Gear. Correction number 94, Bruce Gear. 22 yard return. Decent position on the 28 yard line. They're going to have to obviously come out of their game plan of trying to hold on to the ball. They just have to get points on the scoreboard as quickly as possible. That is Minnesota. That possession game worked for them a little bit in the first half, particularly in the first quarter when they kept it 7 3. And they used up seven minutes plus on that one drive. And Lou Holtz hoping now to see his Golden Gophers get something going here. Making the handoff, keeping on his feet. Gets out across the 35-yard line to about the 36. A gain of about eight yards from Ricky Foggy. Brought Ricky. down by Jay Norvell. Ricky doesn't seem to be running that quarterback option like he did earlier in the season. I think he got hurt against Ohio State two or three weeks ago, and I think it really has affected his running. So it's a second down now. Call it three yards to go for the first down as they mark the ball right at the 35-yard line. 9.05 to go, third quarter. Iowa now in front by 21. The pitch is to Valdez Baylor. And Baylor has got the first down. Out to the 43-yard line. Devon Mitchell, a senior from Brooklyn, the free safety on this Iowa team, finally bumped him out. Devon Mitchell, a good tackler, made a great tackle that time against Valdez Baylor coming out the sideline. If he don't make that tackle, he's liable to slide right down the sidelines, go another 55 yards for a touchdown. Ten carries, 39 yards now for Baylor. First down at the 43. Foggy throwing to Gaylord. He's got him at midfield, and Gaylord close to a first down. Looks like he's got the first down at the 46-yard line of Iowa. Nate Creer and Devon Mitchell back in the coverage for the Hawkeyes. Gaylord on a turn in. Moving from the left side. Good pass by Ricky Foggy. Ten yards, first down. Gaylord, a junior out of San Diego, California, where he's not used to weather like this. <laughs> first down at the 46. Out of that wishbone. 
throws to the fullback, David Puck, and he pulls his way ahead to the 41-yard line. Larry Station and Devon Mitchell making the tackle for Iowa. Good hitting going on in this football game. Larry Station that time stopped David Puck in his tracks, but not until he's gained six yards. Larry Station really has a nose for that football, doesn't he? Oh, he sure does. And, of course, Hayden Fry gives him a lot of room to maneuver. He says, do what you have to do when you have to do it. Puck having a good day in the ground. 12 carries, 60 yards, second down and four at the 40-yard line of Iowa. He's the guy who made the play. He grabbed a hold of Ricky Foggy's arm just before he tried to pitch it out to Valdez Baylor. Watch it here. Over to your right. Here comes, here comes the big guy, Richard Fryer. Knocks the ball down, gets up, and makes the recovery himself. That's a great play defensively by the big guy, Richard Fryer. So now the Hawkeyes have it back on their own 47-yard line. Fryer, a sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey. makes the reception and is out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Minnesota, about two yards shot in the first down. Pete, I think you could have thrown that one. Don Pollard making the tackle for Minnesota. I counted almost seven seconds back there with great blocking up front by that offensive line. Preston and Humphrey and Kretsch and Hink Spangler, they're doing a great job today as they have the whole season for Chuck Long. Otherwise, you don't complete 65.6% .6 of your passes if you don't have that great blocking up front by those linemen. Long now, 15 out of 23. Closing in on 200 yards. This is Kevin Harmon. The junior and for the Harmon brothers. Falling ahead, it's going to be close to a first down. They'll probably have to bring the measurement in. Don Pollard making the tackle. Just depends on where they set it. It'll be short. By about six inches, I don't think they're going to bring the, the, uh, the lines in. We have not gotten a report on the injury to Ronnie Harmon. I don't think it's serious. Now, he did walk off the field. But as a precautionary measure in the score, 24 to 3, why not give his brother a little time, too, huh? Shy of the first down by about a half yard. It's third down, less than a yard to go for the first down. The 44-yard line. Hudson, the fullback. Has the first down, down close to the 41. Peter Najeri and Matt Martinez making the tackle for Minnesota. David Hudson, the sophomore from Texas. This is a fine football team, this Iowa Hawkeye team. And you can see that they're having a lot of fun today. Hayden Fry is the kind of a guy, as you've mentioned many, many times, that he likes to enjoy football. And it looks like this football team, with the leadership of Hayden Fry, likes to play and is having as much fun as we are up here. And Hayden Fry told us yesterday, in all the years he's been in coaching, and he's coached for a long time, he has never been around a team with so much talent in so many different positions as this Iowa club. It is really a very solid football team. Long, scrambling out of trouble. A little toss to Kevin Harmon, but that's going to go for a big loss back at the 48-yard line of Iowa. That's a screen pass to the right that he tried to throw uh, to Kevin Harmon, as he did earlier in the second half to Ronnie Harmon. But unfortunately, the defense of Minnesota Played it very well. Watch the defense move over there. Big number 88, Bruce Holmes, a linebacker. And Larry Joyner almost got in defense. there for the hit. On the quarterback, Chuck Long. So they mark the ball at the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and 21 yards to go for the first down. You know he can make a first down from everywhere. <laughs> he sure can. Back to throw. Again, good protection. And wide open is Scott Helverson. A first down from anywhere. <laughs> Without a doubt, he's a good one. He read zone defense over on the left hand side, and he saw his, his man wide open out there. And watch his great play by Long. 
The tackle was finally made by Matt Martinez, number seven. Larry Joyner coming over to help out. Helverson right in the middle of that zone out there and a first down for Iowa. Helverson having a big day. Seven receptions now, good for 86 yards. 5-18 to go, third quarter. Kevin Harmon. After a gain of two, brought down right at the 20-yard line. Joel Brown, number nine, making the stop for Minnesota. Do you think these goalposts are going to hold up today if Iowa wins this game? I tell you what, these fans are ready to celebrate here. Just when it looked like a few weeks ago after that loss to Ohio State that Iowa's chance of going to a Rose Bowl was gone. Well, Wisconsin did it to Iowa last year, and this year they came through again for Iowa against Ohio State. Long back to throw on second down. Protection, battling for it for Matt Martinez, and I think Matt Martinez got it. He did. The interception by Matt Martinez. Long got a little careless. Took Martinez. it out of the hands of Bill Happel. Watch Happel down the field. He didn't run a great pass pattern here against Matt Martinez, and he wasn't quite open, and Chuck Long got a little careless. Little care There's Martinez. Look at him. He's got perfect coverage. Heppel almost fell down, but I'll tell you something. That was a great defensive play by Matt Martinez and an interception for Minnesota, and this game ain't over yet. So the turnover gives the ball back to the Gophers with 4.32 to go in the third quarter, and Iowa leading it by 21. We are back at Kinnick Stadium, 4.32, the time remaining third quarter. Minnesota down by 21, but after the interception by Matt Martinez, they have the ball back just shy of their own 10-yard line. Ricky Foggy is going to run it. And he'll get about five yards. George Davis, number 37, making the stop for Iowa. I made the point before, but as you saw that play right there, Ricky Foggy just is not running with a tremendous amount of confidence. Here's a second period score. My old alma mater, Michigan and Ohio State, tied 3-3. Three to three. It's usually a defensive beat-up battle. <laughs> Tennessee, 42. Kentucky, nothing. It looks like it's Tennessee in the Sugar Bowl. And down on the field, there's got to be some concern as Larry Station is the injured player. The All-American linebacker from Omaha, Nebraska, being tended to. Don't look good either. Tell, tell, tell all these people what Larry Station's, uh, what he said uh, in, in a statement he made. Not well, when, he, when, he came, when he came to school here at Iowa, he said his goal was to play Big Ten football, maybe play a little pro football, and then become president of IBM. And he has the credentials to do so. He's a good student as well as a great football player. And hopefully he is not hurt badly here. But it's like an ankle is, or a leg. It's not a good looking sight. And that could be very costly for this Iowa club. He will get a standing ovation as they bring him off the field. He's a real favorite of the fans here at Iowa. And let's hope for his sake, because he certainly wants to play in that Rose Bowl on January 1st, that he is not seriously hurt. It is second down, five yards to go for the first down. Minnesota trying to... Rally in the second half with 4.09 remaining third quarter. The give us to the fullback, David Puck, and there is absolutely no running room. He's hit for a loss of body yard. Pat Peterson, the nose guard, a senior from Bettendorf, Iowa. Right there to make the stop. Well, apparently, the... the Minnesota football team does not have enough confidence in their passing game. Otherwise, they'd be passing the ball right now. And to replace Larry Station at one of those linebacker spots is Dan Worth, sophomore from Des Moines. Third down, four yards to go for the first down. Foggy looking for a receiver. Trying to dive ahead for that first down. He's going to be shy by about a yard. Richard Pryor and Jeff Drost. We're there to prevent Foggy from getting the necessary yardage for the first down. So Minnesota will be forced to kick here. Here's Foggy rolling out to the right. Can't find anybody open. Good defense by the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Watch the hit out front here. Number 55. Boom. Watch it. Oh, we didn't get that. They stopped it. <laughs> Bill Happel back awaiting the kick from Adam Kelly. by Kelly and of a line drive kick. It will take a Minnesota bounce though and roll inside the 45 yard line. Rolling down at about the 41 yard line. And that's where the Hawkeyes will put it in play with 3.05 to go in the third quarter. A 40 yard kick for Adam Kelly. No return. Iowa leading it 24-3. They have the ball back and we'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. 3.05 to go, third quarter. Iowa 24, Minnesota 3 is our score. And the Hawkeyes have it back at their own 41-yard line. Chuck Long back to throw. Firing down the field. He's got Bill Heppel. First down, Hawkeyes all the way down to the 34-yard line. Well, there was some question. <laughs> there was some question as to whether Chuck Long could read defenses. This one he reads well. He finds Happel right in the middle of the zone, and he whips it to Happel. It's a first down and a 25-yard gain, and Iowa moving the ball again. Another big game going on in the Big Ten now in the second quarter. And Ohio State has taken a 10-3 lead over Michigan. Tripped up as he crossed the line of scrimmage. He fell forward for about a three-yard gain. Don Pollard making the stop. I, I made mention that uh, Chuck Long might not be able to read defenses, and I asked Hayden Fry yesterday about that, and he said, look, Ron, he says, if a guy's been playing for me for four years and he completes 66% of his passes, do you think he can't read a defense? There's that score we just gave you, Ohio State. With an early lead, Illinois leading Northwestern early. And second down, seven yards to go for the first down. Long back to throw. Again, good protection. And a wide open man is the fullback, David Hudson. Another first down for Iowa. All the way out of the 21-yard line. Bruce Holmes, Dwayne Dutrell making the tackle for Minnesota. Boy, Chuck Long's getting a lot of time back there. And when he gets time, I'm going to tell you something. He could pick you apart. This time, he finds David Hudson for a 12-yard gain the first down. He's wide open over on the right-hand sideline. Long has good size for a quarterback, 6'4", 213 pounds. He's from Wheaton, Illinois. You, you notice how he throws the ball off sort of a sidearm throw, like an old Bobby Lane. I remember Bobby Lane in his heyday uh, down in Texas, of course, with the Detroit Lions, Pittsburgh Steelers, used to throw the ball the same way. First down, Long again back to throw, and again a wide open receiver is Kevin Harmon. Harmon falling forward to about the 18-yard line. A four-yard gain, it'll be second down and six. Well, one great thing about Chuck Long, he can throw it long and he can throw it short and he can kill you anywhere on the field. That was a four yard game by Kevin Harmon. Minnesota experiencing a rather long afternoon. Yeah, they aren't having too much fun. I'll tell you one thing, Lou Holtz isn't having fun when he's losing. You know it as well as I do. And most coaches don't. Second down, six yards to go for the first down. Kevin Harmon, lots of room. First down six-yard line. Paul Strong, number 18, finally made the tackle on Kevin Harmon, who has picked right up where his older brother Ronnie left off. He's gained 36 yards now and six carries. Good carry right through the middle, but a good trap block up front there by Mark Spranger, number 53, getting him loose and down to the six-yard line for a first down. Right knee of uh, station is hurt, but I think he'll be back. As we understand it, the injury to Larry Station, not serious. He should be back in the ball game. That's good news for Iowa fans. Penalty markers are down. Kevin Harmon was tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Pete Van Weren, Ron Kramer, here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, where with just 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the Hawkeyes 
headed for a Rose Bowl if they win here today. Leading Minnesota 24 to 3. And moving the ball very nicely. The second down declines. Against these Minnesota Gophers. Iowa playing an almost perfect game today. Very few penalties and no turnovers. Iowa has scored on touchdown runs by Ronnie Harmon from five yards out, Kevin Harmon from 11 yards out, and a four-yard touchdown pass from Chuck Long to the tight end Mike Flagg. They've also had a 26-yard field goal kicked by Rob Houtland, the only Minnesota score of the day, a 35-yard field goal by Chip Lowmiller in the first quarter. It is second down goal. Penalty markers are down again. Chuck Long heading for the end zone is stopped shy of the end zone. Peter Najarian in there on the tackle along with Steve Thompson. Looked like Quinn Early, who was in mo motion, started towards the line of scrimmage just a little bit too early. And that's why the flags are on the field. It'll be against Iowa. They can't get careless. They do have a nice lead here, 24 to 3, with four seconds left in the third period. But they cannot get careless. Look at the difference in total yards on the day. Iowa getting a great passing performance again from Chuck Long today. The motion on the offense. Uh, second down. The penalty moves the ball back just outside the 10-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Chuck Long with his great poise. Great experience. And, and time great will expire here in the third quarter. And great talent. <laughs> so they'll walk it down to the other end of the field. The Iowa fans are smelling the roses. There's one quarter left to play, and it is Iowa 24, Minnesota 3. We have completed three quarters here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. It is 24-3, the Hawkeyes over the Golden Gophers. The fourth quarter will be underway shortly. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, quality, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Pete Van Warren, Ron Kramer, back with you from Kinnick Stadium, Larry Station. The All-American linebacker for Iowa. Taping his shin guard back on. Somebody somebody probably leg-whipped him and, uh, and hurt his shins, and, but he'll be back. Fourth quarter about to get underway here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes leading at 24-3. They are 15 minutes away from going to a Rose Bowl. Chuck Long trying to quiet down the crowd a little bit. And inside the five-yard line before Bruce Holmes made the tackle. Goes the fullback, David Hudson. Unusual for Chuck Long to hand it off to, uh, to Hudson down there, but he did pick up six yards. Puts him in a position now where he only has four yards to go for the touchdown. Eight carries for 23 yards now for Hudson. They don't have to run the ball very much, just enough to keep that defense honest. The interesting number there, the time of possession. The Gophers have held the football longer than the Hawkeyes have, but look what the Hawkeyes have done with it when they've had it. It is third down and goal. is in for the score. Rick Bayless. A Hayden Fry call. The main reason he wanted to come back for a fifth year at Iowa was to go to a Rose Bowl, and looks like he's headed there. Rob Hoplin with the point after. It is now 31-3. Iowa with a four-touchdown lead over Minnesota with 14 minutes, 11 seconds remaining. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Iowa City with this play, Chuck Long... Passes it back, in for the touchdown. 
Rick Bayless, four yards. Iowa now leads 31 to three. Here's another angle at this play. Watch Chuck Long fake into the fake into the line to Dick to Hudson. There's Hudson into the line. Pitch out back. Touchdown. Bayless. A sellout crowd here today. Look at that. 6,020. Oh, I love to see those blocks. And another Big Ten battle between Ohio State and Michigan in this tied 10 10. Lou Holtz. Not very happy. Still hoping, though, that his Minnesota team will get invited to the Independence Bowl against the winner of the Clemson South Carolina game. And those in defense, bids will come out a in defense bit later. of Minnesota, we must say they've had a number of injuries the last two or three weeks. And as I mentioned to you earlier, it looks like Ricky Foggy is not 100% today either. And Hayden Fry made a good point yesterday telling us that for the last five weeks, the team that Iowa yeah. has played has just come off a game against either Michigan or Ohio State. You know how those two teams can bang up a football team. Eugene Gaylord awaiting the kick. He'll take it at the four-yard line. Gets to about the 23, and that's where the Gophers will put it in play. The tackle was made by Marv Cook. It was the man that did the kicking off, a 20-yard return. There's the plays, eight by Iowa, 59 yards, held the ball three minutes and 54 seconds. We only have 14 minutes and six seconds left in this football game. Iowa looks like they are going to go to the Rose Bowl, and the sun seems to be shining through just a bit here in Iowa City. Yeah, I think we are going to get some sunshine breaking through. But it's still cold. For those of you that just joined us, our temperature is about 9 degrees here in Iowa City. Ricky Foggy back to throw. Alvin Anderson wide open at the 40-yard line. Couldn't hang on to it. Boy, that hurt Minnesota last week against Michigan as sure well. Sure did. I don't know if Melvin wants to catch that, uh, catch that football. That one was just a well-thrown ball by Ricky Foggy. We'll see it hit Mel Anderson right in the hands. Ricky Foggy, four for eight for 47 yards, and he's got to get the ball up in the air if he's going to get any points on the scoreboard, and it doesn't. It looks very dim for Minnesota right now to score 28 points here in the fourth period against a very good Iowa football team. Gaylord comes out wide right. Gary Couch, who wasn't supposed to play today, is now in there at a wide receiver spot. Foggy had that ball slip. He wanted to throw long, and the ball just slipped out of his hands. It's been that kind of day for Minnesota. Well, it may be that kind of a day, but they're playing one of the finest teams in the nation, ranked number four, Iowa, 9-1, and one, coming into this football game in a cinch between you and I to go to the Rose Bowl. What's this ball slip out of Ricky Foggy's hands? Here he goes. Snap it back. Whoops. Where's the ball go? Where's my ball? <laughs> you really feel sorry for a oh, kid yeah. when something like that happens to him. I can't do anything about it. It is now third down and 10. 13.55, the time left in the game. As they say, next case, doctor. Foggy back to throw on third down. Can't find an open man. Now he does, and he hits Andy Hare over there at the 35-yard line. And that's enough for a first down. They'll mark it at the 34. It's still enough for the first down. Nate Creer back in the coverage for Iowa. Nate Creer does a great job over there because if he doesn't make this play, we see, as we see the coverage, there's a chance to go all the way down the sideline. So it's a first down for the Gophers at the 34-yard line, their own 34. Boggy giving to his fullback. Roselle Richardson carrying for the first time today. Gets it all the way out to the 48-yard line. Another first down for Minnesota. Roselle Richardson playing fullback. He's a former quarterback, I think. And he still is listed number three yeah. on the depth chart at quarterback. Yeah, well, they, they, you, know, you know the way Lou Holtz does. He just changes everybody in different positions. He was finally brought down by George Davis after a 13-yard game. Huh? So it's first and 10, Minnesota at their own 47. Toward couch incomplete over on the Iowa sideline. We really thought that Couch would not play today, but he's in the football game. The 
has a bad shoulder. And there is what's going on here at Iowa today. The roses are blooming in the snow here at Iowa City. Happy crowd here at Kinnick Stadium. Second down, 10. Ricky Foggy giving to Rose out Richardson. This time, Richardson doesn't have any running room. Gained about two yards. Stopped shy of the 50-yard line. Bruce Gear at Peterson making the tackle for Iowa. Not much of a gain. Two yards. 13 minutes to go. 31-3 Iowa. I think Minnesota's just saying, let's get this ball game over. Let's give them the pick and let's get out of here. Floyd of Rosedale is the pick. Purdue 31, Indiana 14 at halftime. Michigan State 14, Wisconsin nothing at halftime. Good game there. Third down and eight. He back to throw under pressure. The pass caught by Rosal Richardson. It was tipped by George Davis and then caught by Rosal Richardson. It's a first down for Minnesota. A blitz was on and Rosal Richardson slipped out of the backfield, made a one-hander. What's the ball being tipped by George Davis? Just over the outstretched hands of George Davis and a great catch by Roselle Richardson. One-hander, 11-yard gain, first down. And Minnesota retains possession of the ball on the 40-yard line. So the Golden Gophers trying to get on the board here. The pitch goes to Andy Hare, and Andy Hare has got another first down. Or at least close to it. It's going to be right on the 30-yard line where they mark it. George Davis made the tackle. 12-yard gain. It's three carries now for 19 yards. But they need scores on the board quickly. They're going to mark that ball shy of the first down by about an inch. Couch came back in. The clock moving, 11 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the game. Iowa leading 31-3. Minnesota beginning to move now in the fourth quarter. A long ways to go to catch up. Ricky Foggy's pass is caught out of bounds. Eugene Gaylord caught the ball, but he was out of bounds, so it's incomplete. Just a little bit too much time. The Gaylord was down the field. He has to run that pass pattern just a little bit deeper so that Ricky Foggy, when he rolls out here to the right, the timing was off just a bit. And Eugene Gaylord could not make the catch in bounds. Foggy six. now six out of 13, 69 yards in the air. Minnesota also having a difficult time with Foggy's running game today because of the Hawkeye defense. He's among the top total offense quarterbacks in the nation. They didn't stop him that time. He got plenty for the first down all the way down to the 20 yard line. Dan Worth, Jay Norvell making the stop for Iowa. Good fake to the fullback from Ricky Foggy running the option. Pick up of 10 yards. And that's 11 carries now, but only for eight yards overall. For oh, the defense have done a great job against that wishbone offense that Minnesota uses. But they've got to get respect, and they've got to keep respect. If Minnesota can get in for a touchdown here, they, they start next year off or maybe even a bowl uh, on a good note. Inside the 15-yard line, all the way down to the 13-yard line, goes Ed Penn, Nate Freer, Dan Worth making the stop for Iowa. Yes, we talked earlier about how many seniors there were on this Iowa team. They lose 17 starters next year. On the other hand, Minnesota, a very young football team. Ed Penn, who just carried that last time, he's only a freshman. Ricky Foggy, a sophomore. Gary Couch, a sophomore. Foggy still has it, and he's going to be brought down by Jeff Drost. Drost, number 76, got through and grabbed the hold of Ricky Foggy and brought him down for a loss. Good season by Jeff Drost, too. He has 70 tackles, single tackles. Here he is making good penetration, right catching the quarterback, Ricky Foggy, in the, in the backfield for a, a loss. Loss of about three. It'll be third down and six. I wanted to say that, but it didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> The ball at the 16-yard line. It's the Hawks. Out of that wishbone again. Foggy giving to Roselle Richardson. He's got the first down. All the way down to the seven-yard line before Devon Mitchell and Dan Worth brought him this, down for Iowa. This is the kind of drive they needed in the first period to give them a little momentum. Uh, they never did get on a good track, uh, Minnesota, that is. 
Well, you made a good point earlier when you said the one weakness of this wishbone type of attack is it does take a lot of time to maintain a drive, and that's something Minnesota, of course, can't afford right now. Only nine minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the game, and Iowa up by 28. First and goal at the six-yard line. And Penn, the ball carrier, caught at the three-yard line. The ball is loose, and Iowa, I think, recovered. The Hawkeyes have recovered the fumble. John Breeze recovered it, and Worth tossed it. And some good hard hitting in there. George Davis, one of those tacklers. Watch this. Watch this good tackle right here by number 46. Out. Boom. Gone. Fumble. So the hit by Dan Worth caused the fumble, and the tackle, John Freeze, the junior from Forest City, Iowa, fell into football. Kramer with you from Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. It is 31-3 Hawkeyes, and the Hawkeyes have just recovered a Minnesota fumble. Is to Harmon. Harmon gets it out to about the 10-yard line. Five-yard gain. It'll be second down and five. Roses are blooming in a very cold Iowa City here. Iowa just doing a great job. There's Lou Holtz on the sideline. Very dejected. His Minnesota team was moving it right down the field. Fumble. Sellout crowd here of over 66,000, despite the fact that we've had dropping temperatures all day long. It's only about 9 degrees right now. They're all here yet, too, I guarantee you. But the sun has broken through now for the first time today. Although it's been shining on Iowa all afternoon. Kevin Harmon, again, the ball carrier. He's close to the first down. Anthony Burke and Peter Najarian making the tackle. Anthony Burke. Very good game played, a good game plan uh, by Iowa. Hayden Fry doing a fine job in his offensive team with Chuck Long and Flagg and Happel and Helverson and Ronnie Harmon and David Hudson and Kevin Harmon running the ball. The offensive line doing a great job blocking up front. It's very close to a first down right now. And it looks like it is, and Iowa will continue to hold on to the ball with the score 31 to 3, 851 yet to play in this football game. And the Hawkeyes, who need only this victory to make it to the Rose Bowl, can make their Pasadena reservations. I think they can make them right about now. There's going to be a lot of celebration in this. <laughs> this place is going to go oh, wild with this ball bonkers. game. Man. It's absolute bonkers after the football game here. I know, I know that these goal poles will not last. 31-3 Iowa as you score. In of about two yards, stripped up by Matt Martinez. Sure runs a lot like his brother, doesn't he? Ronnie Harmon started the game. He was shaken up. Replaced by Kevin Harmon in the third quarter. And although the injury to Ronnie Harmon is not a serious one, Kevin's been in there since. Ronnie Harmon was playing on a bad ankle to begin the day, so... Hayden Fry wanted to take no chances with his Rose Bowl bound star. And Kevin Harmon, is, since he's come in, has uh, picked up 50 yards in 10 carries. Each of the Harmon brothers has scored a touchdown. Yep. It is second down and eight. And now we're going to have a timeout called by Iowa, stopping the clock with 7.48 to go in the game. And the Hawkeyes leading it 31-3. So it'll be the Hawkeyes headed for that Rose Bowl against either UCLA or Arizona State. We'll be right back. With seven minutes, 48 seconds remaining, Iowa leading at 31-3. They have the ball, second down eight. At their own 17-yard line. Alberson comes out wide left. Apple is wide right. The handoff is to Kevin Hart. It'll be stopped shy of the first down. He did get to the 22-yard line before the tackle was made by Terry Hirasek. They showed both both be number 31 or both number 28. They run exactly alike. And again, we point out this Harmon family, two great running backs here at Iowa, and an older brother, Derek, was a star running back in the Ivy League at Cornell, now plays for the San Francisco 49ers. And a good one. So now it's third down and two. 
Chuck Long, another outstanding afternoon at quarterback. Pitching out to Kevin Harmon. Harmon's got the first down out to the 28-yard line. Wayne Dutrell finally bumped him out of bounds. Seven minutes left here in this football game, and I'm sure this crowd is just pent up waiting for this game to get over for the celebration. I'm sure they're already celebrating. As a former Big Ten player, Ron, what is the feeling to go through all of the practices, all of the games, and get down to that last game and realize that, yes, you are going to go to a Rose Bowl? I never had the opportunity to go to a Rose Bowl, but I had the opportunity of playing against Ohio State. And if we won the game, we go to the Rose Bowl. If we don't win it, we, we, we obviously don't go to the game. And mine was of a sadness because we never did win the game against Ohio State and go to the Rose Bowl. But I know that the guys that were going were from Ohio State, and they were awfully happy. The penalty is against Iowa. We have another final score to pass along. LSU came from behind, beat Notre Dame 10 7. Dead ball, ball start, offense. Still first down. It remains first down, but now 15 yards to go. We don't have many penalties. As we said, it was a very well played, hard hitting football game. But Iowa, obviously, the much better team talent wise today than Minnesota. A very experienced club. And the experience is shown all year. Chuck Long back to throw on first and 15. The pass is caught by Kevin Harmon. He's got some blockers out front. And he gets across the 35-yard line to the 37 before Matt Martinez made the stop for Minnesota. Hard hit by Matt Martinez. A screen pass over here to the left. Long, very patient. He's being blitzed. But he sees Harmon out here to the left, and he passes it to him. machine aren't they they really are they move the ball offensively through the air on the ground defensively they've been tough all day all season well we haven't seen Chuck Long in person all year but he is everything everybody has said about him he has lived up to his billing second down three long with time again the pass though is incomplete the intended receiver Bill Happel well defensed by the Minnesota Gophers Apple very smartly said, well, my percentage is good enough. I'll throw this one away. Some enterprising business folk here in Iowa City got the idea to import some roses and put them up for sale <laughs> yesterday. And that's all you saw around this town yesterday. How many did Over 50,000 of them were sold. Long now 21 out of 31, 268 yards. Record being set here today. Iowa records by Chuck Long. He has set a record for most yards. Their most completions in a season. Total offense. Yards passing in a career. Now over 10,000. And it's a first down for Iowa. And the Harmon family Small. just eating up that Minnesota defense. Both of them. Kevin Harmon now playing and replacing his brother, Ronnie Harmon, who was hurt earlier in this football game, but really doing a great job as a replacement. There are There's some of those roses group. we were telling you about. And there'll be a lot more for the Iowa folks to see on New Year's Day. No doubt this is a great football team, this Iowa Hawkeyes. First down at the 49-yard line. Apple comes wide to the left. Elberson is wide right. Long back to throw again. Again, he's got good protection. Now he scrambles a bit. And down he goes. Back at the 44-yard line. Doug Mueller. And Steve Thompson finally caught up with Chuck Long. We couldn't find an open man that time. Again, he was looking for Happel down the sideline. Either Happel or Big Mike Flag. Neither one came open. Good defensive play by that uh, Minnesota defensive backs. And Long was tackled for a five-yard loss. So it'll now be second and 15. The clock continues to move. Four and a half minutes remaining. And the Hawkeyes... Have this one sewn up. A 31 to 3 lead. Whoops, the ball is loose. And Minnesota recovers. Brett Bush couldn't find the handle on the handoff from Chuck Long. And Minnesota has come up with it. Gary Had made the recovery, the sophomore from Shoreview, Minnesota. 
So that stops the clock with four minutes, 13 seconds remaining. It is 31-3 Iowa. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Four minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Iowa leading at 31-3. Minnesota just recovered the Iowa fumble. They have the ball on the Iowa 45. Allen Holt in now at quarterback. Takes the handoff to Richardson. Back to throw. Throwing for Terry Stewart. Threw it away. Incomplete. Well, defense by the Iowa Hawkeyes. They had a screen called out here on the right. No possible way. So Allen Holt just... Through the ball, out of bounds. Alan Holt, the freshman from Miami, who's gotten quite a bit of playing time this year behind Ricky Foggy. Foggy's had some injury problems from time to time. Gaylord comes wide to the right. Andy Hare is also out on the right side. Second down and ten. Holt back to throw. Firing up the middle for Gaylord. He's got him at the 25. And Eugene Gaylord inside the 15-yard line. First down for Minnesota. The tackle finally made by Nate Creer, the right cornerback. Iowa defense now, they're in a prevent. They play a deep zone. But Allen Hole went back. It was a good pass play. To Eugene Gaylord, 30 yards and a first down on the 15-yard line. Right in the middle of the zone. 47 the time remaining. Looked like a mix up on that play. Roselle Richardson, the ball carrier, seemed like he had a little trouble getting that handoff. Well, from it, really, it really wasn't a, a mix up. He was handing the ball off, and Dan Worth, number 46, just held on to both the quarterback and also uh, on to Roselle Richardson. <laughs> he couldn't get the ball in, he couldn't get the ball out. And Roselle Richardson wouldn't let go of it, so it was a no gainer. Second down and 10. Allen Holt giving to Richardson again, and Roselle Richardson got it down to the 11-yard line. About a four-yard gain. It'll be third down and about six yards to go for the first down. Stopped by Dan Worth. Helped out by George. There's the day that Chuck Long has had in his final appearance before the home crowd here at Kinnick Stadium. And this is where he has taken this club. Pasadena, California, New Year's Day against either UCLA or Arizona State. If UCLA wins their game today against Southern Cal, they'll be the Hawkeye opponent on New Year's Day. And maybe a Heisman Trophy. John Vries will be credited with that quarterback sack. If it was up to Hayden Fry, he certainly would vote Chuck Long in for the Heisman Trophy. Hayden Fry just can't find enough good things to say about Chuck Long, not only as a player, but as a person. Well, I, I don't think he's the only one. I, th I mean, anyone who's watched him play over his career has to have a great deal of admiration for this Chuck Long. Minnesota going for it here. A little over two minutes to go in the game. It's fourth down. Allen Holt firing for Gaylord. He's got it for the touchdown. So the Golden Gophers are hanging in there. On a very thin thread. And Floyd of Rosedale, the hog that goes to the winner of this team, was claimed by Minnesota last year. Going to stay right here in Iowa this year. We only have two minutes left. Keaton Smiley, number 44, could not keep up with Eugene Gaylord. Touchdown, 15 yards. And it's his first touchdown. Chip Miller will attempt the extra point. It's a two-point attempt here. It's going to be incomplete. So the little fake play didn't work. Did not fool Jay Norbell. I'm not really sure who no, that it pass was, was intended for. <laughs> it was intended for Norbell. Who do you think? Adam Kelly just... The play just didn't work. It didn't fool Iowa in the least. And they came rushing in, and unfortunately, just had to throw the ball up for grabs. And with that interception, Jay Norvell now at eight on the season, ties a record set by Niall Kinnick. I don't think you can't consider that. Do you consider that an interception? I'm not sure if you do on an extra point. I don't know. I, you know something? That's something I don't know. 31-9. 31-9, Iowa leading Minnesota. 
Two minutes and one second remaining. I think we got the word uh, that it does not count as an interception if it is on an extra point. Okay, so in that case, Norval still one shy of the record set by the man whom the stadium was named after, Niall oh. Kinnick, back in 1939. He was a great one. I guess that's where they named the stadium after him. You have to be pretty good to have a stadium named after They might have one after long <laughs> in the next 30 or 40 years. Kinnick was a Heisman Trophy winner back in 1939 for Iowa. Long has a good chance at it this year. Ready now for the kickoff. Chip Miller lines that kick and a good catch <laughs> made by Fred Bush. I'll tell you what, that's not easy to do. <laughs> it sure isn't. That's like a baseball pitcher throwing a 90 mile an hour fastball except it's a football coming at you. Well, he's a fullback. He's six foot two and uh, he's 230 pounds and they put him in there for that reason because they figured that that Minnesota would try an onside kick. Well, <laughs> they couldn't get it past Bush. So the ball is at the Iowa 46 with a minute 57 to go. Some substituting being done now. Mark Vlasic is in at quarterback. He's the backup to Chuck Long. And we had a whistle before the snap. You, you remember what Hayden Fry said to us yesterday? Even if he puts his second team quarterback in with two minutes left in the game, the game's all over, he still might throw the ball. And I, and I thought that it was a great answer that he gave. Yeah, he's been criticized for that. Some other coaches and other opponents have accused him of sometimes trying to run up the score. But his explanation, I thought, was very good. When he puts the second unit in there, Dead he said, we practice throwing the ball all week. Whether it's the first, first team on the field, second team on the field, or <laughs> third right. team on the field. So why penalize those kids when they do get a chance to play? Good explanation. Boy, are those guys happy. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? And Big Ten Championship, Rose Bowl. A long season of hard work coming to a rosy end. Ten and one season. The ball carrier is Frank Goodman, a sophomore from West Des Moines. As Hayden Fry is substituting freely here. He wants to get most of his kids in. As you notice on the sideline, though, there, there isn't one youngster, very few youngsters that have the capes on to keep them warm anymore. I think they're warming up. I don't think they need them today. Yeah. Second down, 12. Great excitement, great thrill, I'm sure. Of course, you see, before I mentioned you, there was no Rose Bowl, but I did play in some world championship games with the, with, with the Green Bay Packers and Vince Lombardi, so I know exactly how those youngsters feel on the sideline. Second down, 12, a minute 11 remaining. The ball carrier is Marshall Cotton, a junior from Davenport, Iowa. He got it out to about the 47-yard line. Well, it's been a tremendous season for Hayden Fry on the Iowa Hawkeyes. And the crowd is on its feet here at Kinnick Stadium. The clock is moving. 45 seconds remaining. And now some of the members of the crowd getting down along those sidelines. I tell you what, it's going to be a mad scene here when this ball game ends. Even maybe before it ends. So hang on. They, I hope, just hope they don't get up to here. It's a third down play and the penalty markers go down. I see a shoe on the field already. Oh, somebody going out to get it. Nice move he made, didn't he? <laughs> a lot of the students here at Iowa ringing the field now getting ready to congratulate their heroes and they'll have that chance in about another minute Dead ball to let it go. Iowa still third down a delay of game penalty moves the ball back to the 42 yard line this Minnesota team playing very gallant today they, they really haven't made many mistakes they're just up against a really good Iowa football team. Look who's lined up a tailback. Nate Creer, a senior defensive back. Is he going to get a chance to carry the ball? Nope. The ball handed off to another senior defensive back, Rick Schmidt, <laughs> getting his chance at offense. Well, I think they're going to let it run out. 16, Here they come. 15. Here they come. You notice all the players are still wearing their helmets. Look at the scene here at Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes 
has a rose ball bound. Ten champions are Rose Bowl bound. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 31 to nine winners over the Minnesota Gophers. They also take that little bronze hog with them into the locker room. Great joy. Chuck Long said the reason he made his decision to come back to Iowa for one more year was to try to lead them to the Rose Bowl that got away from them a year ago. And he has just done it. We also want to thank those people responsible for Minnesota. President Dr. Kenneth Keller, Athletic Director Paul Deal, SID Bob Peterson and his staff, along with the people here in Iowa. They've been absolutely fantastic to us. President James Friedman, Athletic Director Bump Chalmers Elliott, and SID George Wine and his staff. It's just been a great year for us doing Big Ten football on Turner Network. And it's been a great year for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They finished the regular season with a record of 10 wins and only one defeat, while Minnesota improving from last year with a record of six wins and five losses. The goalposts are still up. And that's where the Hawkeyes will turn up next, the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. They got a troop of policemen surrounding the goalposts. Great joy here in Iowa City, and I'm sure there's going to be tremendous parties tonight. That's what makes football great. Not the game itself, but the parties afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Ten Championship belongs to Aiden Fry and the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll be right back, and we'll be going in the talk with Iowa head coach Hayden Fry. This is Super Football Saturday. The final score here at Kinnick Stadium, Iowa 31, Minnesota 9. The Hawkeyes are going to the Rose Bowl. And right now, let's go down to the Iowa locker room. Head coach Hayden Fry, congratulations to you. And if you can, sum up for us just what this season has meant to you and the players on your ball club. Well, it's been uh, truly a fantastic season. Uh, we had a, a lot of guys like Chuck Long who decided to come back uh, for the fifth year dreaming that could uh, possibly go to the Rose Bowl. And that's exactly what we made happen. Magnif magnificent group of young men, uh, uh, like a family, very close, played with great determination and spirit, uh, class people, and that's the reason we won. Coach Fry, this is Ron Kramer. Uh, you know, when we were talking yesterday, you said, football should be a lot of fun. Is this the kind of fun you were talking about? Yes, sir. I, th I think this exemplifies the, the utopia of, of fun. Uh, I can imagine in our dressing room right now, uh, they're doing the hokey pokey. <laughs> <laughs> How about this game today? I knew you were expecting a tough game from Minnesota. What, uh, what did the game look like to you from down on the field? Well, it was a tough physical game, and certainly I'd like to compliment Minnesota. They, they hung in there. They kept trying real hard, but uh, Today was the day for the Hawks. Uh, our defense was just super. We made a big play and we had to. And once again, Chuck Long and Ronnie Harmon were just magnificent. Let me ask you one more quick question. A couple of players, a couple of your key players shaken up in the game. Ronnie Harmon, Larry Station, are they okay? Ronnie Harmon has a bruised shoulder. He's, he uh, assures me he'll be ready for the Rose Bowl. Uh, Larry Station uh, was clipped, and he says that uh, he'll be ready for workouts whenever we want to start. They're, they're both winners. They'll bounce back. Well, Hayden, congratulations to you. I know you want to join your team, and good luck to you at New Year's Day in Pasadena. Real pleasure. Thank you very much. And our thanks to Hayden Fry and all the folks here at Iowa for what's been a splendid afternoon for Hawkeye fans, Ron Kramer. Yes, sir. It certainly has, and a great season for us and a good partnership, and uh, I'm going to be sad uh, over the weekends now. I'm not going to be able to see you after three months with you, and uh, it, it's going to be sort of sad next weekend, but I'm going to be sure to watch all these football games, the bowl games. There's 16 of them, and they're going to be a lot of fun over the holidays. And it looks like the Big Ten may be sending as many as six teams to postseason bowl games this year. Today's game has been brought to you by Buick. 
for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. And by Valvoline Forgard, the motor oil. We interrupt regular programming to bring you the Hayden Fry Press Conference live from Iowa City. Now, here is TV9 Sports Director John Campbell. Hi, everybody. John Campbell back at the interview room underneath Kinnick Stadium. We're just underneath the locker room where Hayden Fry is expected momentarily to accept a Rose Bowl bid from Fred Sodwittle, who is the incoming president of the Tournament of Roses. Uh, Hayden will be coming in momentarily. As you probably saw minutes ago, Iowa wrapped up the Rose Bowl bid with a 31-9 victory over the Minnesota Gophers. Iowa finishes at 10-1. They finished the conference at 7-1, their first outright conference championship since 1959. Since 1958, we should say and Hayden Fry is entering the room now with quarterback Chuck Long and all the dignitaries we see Fred Sidewiddle of the Tournament of Roses committee coming in with the roses congratulations Hayden thank you John <laughs> thank you as you can see a happy scene uh, this room is jammed right now I would guess 150 to 200 reporters and cameramen to record this and uh, we'll turn it over now to Fred Sidewiddle of the Tournament of Roses and uh, Phil Hattie. First thing. Uh, we're going to do, uh, Coach Fry has announced that after he's done, you're allowed up in the locker room. Uh, first of all, we've got a presentation here from Max Christian of the Cotton Bowl. Actually, Chuck. Big Max. Congratulations, Thank you, Coach. Thank you, buddy. All your friends at the Cotton Bowl want to wish you great success in the Rose Bowl. And while you're at the Rose Bowl, we want to give you something to wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Max. Let me say this. The Hawks would have been honored to have played in the, in the Cotton Bowl. I know you're going to have a great champion in Southwest Conference. It's unbelievable that uh, had we lost a game, uh, we would have had an invitation down there. I don't know that we'll ever see a, a day like that at Iowa, but the fact the Rose Bowl was number one on our list, uh, don't feel bad about us not coming to the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Max. Next up, we have Iowa President James Friedman. Good. Coach, I'm I just proud. want to tell you how proud the university is of everything that you and all the players have done this year. Thank it's you, a great honor and credit to the university. We're all going to be in Pasadena rooting for you. Fantastic. And may I publicly thank you for the indoor facility we couldn't have gone. <laughs> thank you, sir. Vice President of the Tournament of Roses, Fred Sodwell. Coach Fry. Fred. Remember you out there in 82 and as you left, uh, you said you're going to return and darn if you're not going to return. We're welcoming you to Pasadena on behalf of the 800 men and women who are involved with the Tournament of Roses and our president, Fred Johnson. We give you these roses. This is a token of our esteem and best wishes. Congratulations on a great season. Marvelous. Thank you, sir. We uh, look forward to participating uh, in a Rose Bowl and I guarantee you, We'll do a better job this time than we did last time. I know you will. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, you don't mind if I pass these on to my quarterback, do you? You do that. <laughs> Greatest quarterback in America, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we, uh, we can't put into words our appreciation to all you people in the news media that have given us great coverage, exposure for all of our players, the Big Ten. Uh, we're extremely proud to represent the Big Ten. We know it's going to be a real tough job out there, but we have a real tough team. And uh, we've got time now to get some people healthy. And uh, it all started back when this young man made a decision to pass up a few bucks with the pros because he loves college football. And he thought maybe we had a chance to go to Rose Bowl. And uh, I, I just can't put into words how much I love Chuck Long as a person. He's done a great job along with all the other Hawks, and that's the reason we won. Well, Chuck, if you want to say thank you, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Price said a lot of nice things, and, and you know, words can't express how I feel right now. It's, it's great to be going back to Pasadena. I was only a freshman when we went, and, and uh, it's going to be better this time, I know. And, and Coach Fry might like me a lot, but this is this is one of the reasons why I came back for another year, to be with Coach Fry for another year, because he's, he's the greatest college head football coach in the world. I really mean that. He's really a good coach, and, and it's been fun playing for you, Coach. Really has. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate that. Uh -huh. Now, has anybody got any questions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. How, how many people are out on the field today? Quite a few. I hope no one got hurt. Does anyone that really have any questions? Coach, would you comment on what Chuck Long has meant to this program, not in terms of touchdown passes and yardage, but bringing a program that is floundering for so long as it is? 
from it. Uh, I believe it goes back uh, to the day that we, uh, well, obviously when we recruited Chuck, but uh, as a player, I think the impact of Chuck Long was felt in the Arizona game, the first game that he, uh, we won a great ball game and that got the program going, but the way Chuck has handled himself from a personal standpoint, whether it be in the classroom or downtown or uh, behind the center awaiting a snap, has always been first class. And I think uh, the fact we have other first class people on our football team, that any of those guys that were in a twilight zone from a character standpoint <coughs> immediately got their act together. And as we tried to become top citizens, we became better and better in football. And obviously it all starts with the quarterback. And, uh, and I truly believe that you, you have a class university or a class football team or whatever because you have class people. And that's what we emphasize here. And uh, this is the best example I know in the world right here, our quarterback. Give us a little overall. That's it for now from the Iowa Locker Room. Join us at 6 o'clock on TV9 Eyewitness News for more post-game comments and highlights. This is John Campbell in Iowa City. This has been a live special report from Iowa City. We now rejoin the Nebraska-Oklahoma game.